Well, I suppose if you've got a Drake bouncing up and down on you and you're a duck, that tires you out quite a lot. Very, very early morning sports radio for Postman. Full whip. Trolley dollies. Out of a dirt chip, pressed wet. And anyone who had to do a dawn runner after a very ill-advised one-night stand. Go, go, go. Over my dead body. The two mics on Talk Sport. Look at the light! The light is broken! The best way to grow non-alcoholic grapes is to actually turn to dandelions because they haven't got any alcohol in them. Dandelions haven't got any alcohol in them? No. Well, neither have grapes. Of course grapes have if you ferment them. Oh, you think grapes are alcoholic? Of course I I do. What, so when you eat grapes, there's alcohol in them? Of course there is. This is Talk Sport. We are the two mics, and I'm delighted to say it's time to say a very, very good morning to Mr. Mike, a porky, a parry. A very good morning to you, Mr. Parry. A very good morning to you, Mike. Uh, very exciting weekend, as you say. It was. But, uh, we're putting that behind us now. Yes. Um, interesting, though. Um, very interesting. Now yeah. then, you see, your gullibility yes. expresses itself in all sorts of ways. How do you mean? Well, you've read some report by a bunch of scientists who are driven by trying to. Um, provide governments with new reasons to up taxes on energy and wind farms and all that kind of nonsense. Are you talking about the electric car revolution? Yeah, yeah, and you're now... Because it is, all I'm saying is yeah. it's coming. It is coming. Yeah, but now you're saying, oh, yeah, finally it's here. There's going to be no petrol or diesel cars on Earth by the year 2040. I that is 23 you. years Hang ago. On. I just that told you. That is 23 you. years away. 23 years away is not very far when you uh, when you move as quickly as the world Rubbish. now moves. It is really Rubbish. Not. Now, 23 you, years ago, you, you didn't have here. a mobile phone. I know you won't be here. Mm. 23 years ago, I didn't have a mobile phone. No. Are you serious? Yeah, absolutely. Do you know when 23 years ago was? Yeah. 1993. That's right. I had a mobile phone. Only just. No, but I had one. Only just. You just said I didn't have one. Uh, you didn't have a mobile phone in 1993. Yes, I did. No, you didn't. Yes, I did. No, you didn't. Oh, yes, I did. Are well, you just going to do this all through the show? No, I'm not. What I'm telling you why I know I had a mobile phone in 1993. Why? Because I came back to the United Kingdom oh, in 1992 right. to work for the Daily Express. Yes, I brought you, you went, back and gave you a you, job. No, you didn't. I did. Uh, you moved to my You'd apartment. You'd penniless without me. You moved to my... I was penniless because you moved out of my apartment. Oh, I gave you to look after for a stories. year. And you, you lost a million stop. and a half dollars about, about, about that same sort of time. You want to and stop they, that story. Nobody thing, believes the it. The first thing they gave me... Mm. Uh, well, they'll, they'll believe it when I take you to the apartment and no. we film it no. when we go to New York in September. You'll get me there. Oh, yes, we will. No, you won't. We will film you there and mm. uh, also i will i will see the uh, the, the copies of the, the monies that you paid in any event um, what happened was I was given a mobile phone by the Daily Express news yeah. desk. So really? I did have a mobile phone okay. from 1992. So it was your first? Uh, it was my first mobile phone. Right, so 23 years ago you got your first mobile phone. Correct. That puts it into complete perspective. Why? In 23 years' time, yeah. right, I believe cars will be running off water. They won't be running off electricity. Water? Yeah, of right, course another one of Porky's predictions. Well, I'm just telling you, in 23 years' time, the pace of technology, the way it's... You, you've got to remember that since the start of the 20th century, Look. technology has moved faster than it has for the 5,000 years before uh-huh. uh, the year 1910, <laughs> OK? What technology? Uh, what technological advance did they have in 1910? Well, in 1910, for mm. instance, the steamship yeah. uh, was replaced by all-firing ships, OK? By what? In 1910... All-firing ships? Yeah, that's right, yeah. Uh, are you in, sure about this? Uh, absolutely certain. Okay. In, in, in 1910, yeah. for instance, we reached the peak of coal production uh-huh. in Britain. Really? And it was the peak of the... Well, of the... Um... You're just grasping now, aren't No, you? I'm not. British you Empire's are. power. You're drowning so... in a sea of uh, futurism no. and a sea of things that you don't understand. That's no. why you're so against if you're, them. If you're, if you're dim enough to believe that, oh, in 23 years' time, there yeah. won't be any diesel or petrol cars... There won't be. Well, it's such a pathetic well, let me, let me prediction. Give you, let me give you the evidence, OK? Uh, Volvo, there is no evidence. Volvo have already said that they are going to stop well, we making know all these we cars. we did all this last week. Yeah, I, know. You... I know, but you I'm know, pointing out to you... we start on something that's new? No, well, well, you're the one who wanted to have a go at me for this particular reason, and we're going to take a call on it as well because we've got one. Uh, the point is, is that you know, Volvo are going to stop making these cars. BMW are going to stop they making say. these cars. Well, they no, but, no, they are. They have already said. Oh, you've spoken to the chief executives no, of all these well, companies. Well, I mean, you? I, you want me to ask you every time there's a story whether you've spoken to the chief executive of the company. Go on, keep going. Why don't we talk to Chris because uh, he wants to know why you're so against the march of progress. It's Chris, not going to happen. That's very why. good morning well, to you, Chris. No. Well, yeah, well, it's it's, it's uh, Mr. Parry, really. Yeah. As, as a man who. I've heard so many great ideas from this man, yeah. and he's no clown. But the, the, the ideas that have come, especially to do with, you know, obviously horse racing, sure. he, he would be so against electric cars and, and, and a way to, you know, create our future, which, you know... We, we, Chris, can I, can, I, can I just tell you this, please? Can I just tell you this? I know from my scientific journals, there's not even enough cobalt on Earth to power one 
80% of all the cars on the globe at the moment. So where are we going to get all this cobalt from that's needed in batteries to run every car on Earth by 2023? They're wor- they're already where working, is this huge already, cobalt mine? No, they're already working on a different kind of battery. No, no, yeah, well, obviously we're going we're gonna to change the power. We get, it may be solar power, it may be water power, it may be hydropower, it'll be anything that yeah. the world creates a lot of. Yeah. It's, it's not always going to be the, the burning of coal that we, we get these days. Solar power's huge, we just can't harness it as well as, you know, we will be. OK. There. Chris, can I tell you this? Uh, yeah. The Earth will burn up with the amount of energy that's going to be needed to produce all the batteries needed to make Incorrect. all cars electric. Not true. The Earth will burn not up. Not true. Not the, the, not a million years, Mr. Paddy. The carbon imprint not, yeah. will be so devastating when you go around digging every mine up in Africa to try and find cobalt <laughs> and then transport yeah, it all yeah. to Europe, which is the main, uh, yeah, so, not, the main not, demand not for cars. It's, it's an outrageous and ridiculous years. theory. We will not for thousands of years, and we're not going to be bothered then because we're all going to be young. It yeah. doesn't matter. Let, well, Porky's not going to be here in 23 years, which is why he doesn't care about this particular development, yeah. which I'm very excited by. Yeah. By the way, Chris, can I tell you something else, please, just to educate you? Can I tell you something else? You're one of these guys who doesn't realise that if that meteorite that crashed into what is now the Gulf of Mexico had missed we the Earth... because it, it happens. Uh, well, well, if it had missed the Earth, which it nearly did, you'd be walking yeah, around now like nearly a... nearly missed the Earth. You, you'd have been walking around now like a semi-dinosaur with uh, two... Like, like, you, what, you mean like you, because you're a dinosaur, aren't you? And, uh, yeah. uh, and yeah, you... Yeah, but we, we would never know about it if it's a deep space asteroid. We would never know about it. Mr Barry, I'm, I'm a great fan of you anyway, because we're Thank both you. blues, but you have you have to realise that so much is out of our hands. We, we, we can't do anything about it. The Earth is going to get warmer. It might get colder. No, it's not. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, it, it, it will do. It will do. But Chris... Radio, this is the world that we live in. Chris, and, this, is, know, this is Porky's we, massive bugbear at the moment. He can't understand technology. He doesn't want it to move forward. He doesn't want us to have anything better mm, than mm, we have now. Mm. And he just doesn't believe it. He's like the guy that stands at the gates of, of progress and tries to keep rubbish. them locked. Rubbish. How can you possibly see 23 years into the future? How can anybody see 23 years no, into no, the future? Exa- exactly. We can't. Exactly. So Thank you very much. Take advantage of what we have right yeah. now. So a ridiculous statement. That, oh, no diesel or oil. The point is, the no, only, no, I, I, the I, I, only I, I, source of power, Chris, that we know on this earth, which is inexhaustible yeah. now, is oil and gas, OK? Not cobalt to make batteries, no, not no. solar power, well, that's not, not wind Blatantly power. Blatantly incorrect. Not wind no, power. We, we no, power no, plenty no, of things. We pa- the yeah, the tell him how he's wrong. Inexhaust- no, you've got it wrong. The only inexhaustible fuel that we have on Earth is the sun. No, it's rubbish. That's rubbish. Because the sun doesn't produce enough power by even no, no, one-tenth we, of we one percent to well power we the Earth. It well enough. And the wind doesn't why, pro- provide know, enough to power the Earth. I don't know why he gets so worked up. Listen, because Chris, you're, all dumb. It. you're all dumb. Yeah, everybody's mad apart from Porky. That's a really, really interesting argument to make. Toyota, by the way, are now working on an electric car powered by a new type of battery oh, that yeah. significantly increases driving range and reduces charging time. And what's it they're made aiming of? to begin Sales in 2022. And what's it made they're of? They're not telling anyone what they're, what they're making. No, of course they're not, of, because it probably doesn't gonna, exist. Oh, it probably doesn't exist, but it's in yeah. the Chunichi Shimbum. Yeah? Yeah. Oh, uh, good. So you should know about it. Yeah, I don't know about it at all. The Chunichi Shimbum is a daily newspaper in Japan. And the other point, of course, is if by 2023 every car is electric, then there won't be enough electricity no, on Earth to rubbish. power these cars. Absolute it's rubbish. already been proven. No, it hasn't been it's proven. It's already been proven. It hasn't even been proven. The point is, is that they're going to have a new electric car, a new battery. The whole, as you've said before, technology has advanced more. Do you have fairies Hang in on. the bottom of your garden? Yes, I do, actually. Do you believe in fairies in the I bottom do. of your garden? I do yeah, believe well, in fairies in the bottom of my Garden. Doesn't surprise I me. I woke up one morning and found you at the bottom of my garden. You're, but, you're, you know, I didn't believe in you. You're, you're the sort of guy who scientists could tell anything to and then mm. charge you ten times what they're charging you now for yeah. the benefit of, oh, I've gone green. Yeah. Brilliant. Would you like to explain Wi Fi coming up next? Sorry? Would you like to explain Wi Fi coming up next? For what purpose? So that we can prove what a dinosaur you are, that you don't know what you're talking about. No, no, no. I don't and need to know how the. Standing, sitting there shouting, it's not going to happen. Yeah, you're not. all mad. I'm the only one that knows anything. Is not really much of an argument. OK, we're going to America uh, in September. Yeah, how are we getting we're, there? We're going on a British Airways jumbo right. jet. you know when Christopher Columbus went there, if you'd shown him a picture of a plane, he'd have gone, nah, rubbish, you can't go in one of those. So, You'll all crash and die. So would you like to explain to me how the jet engine works, please? Not particularly. No. No, because I'm not an expert no, in jet engines. because it's a stupid and question. Are, no, like and you asking and, me about Wi-Fi. No, and neither are you an expert in electric technology for cars, no. so you should stop banging no. on about it like you're the only guy that knows anything. But I'm an expert in common sense no. and reality. 
you're an expert and, and to try in and ludicrous ideas. And as uh, Chris from uh, no, uh, your Liverpool idea just is said, ludicrous. no, as Chris, it's not my idea. As Chris said, you've had so many wacky ideas. Why can't you go along with this one? It's an, it, because it's not even an idea. It's a ridiculous no, projection. It's twenty-three happening. years on. It's happening. Rubbish. It is happening. In twenty-three years' time, yeah. you will be able to beam me up, Scotty, yeah. to get you to Australia in twelve minutes. Okay. Really. So why on earth so people you, will still so be interested in electric cars? So you, I've no so idea. So you don't think electric cars will happen, but you think that people will be moving around the earth like they're in Star Trek? It's without. It's inevitable. Really? Without a doubt, that's going to happen. Okay. All you got to do is break down the body into the molecules it's made <laughs> of and the chromosomes. <laughs> that's and all. The, and, and then you fate. Yeah. I've told you. That's all if you sat, do. I've told you so many times. Yeah. If you brought a tennis ball into this studio, yes. and if you sat in your seat and threw the tennis ball at the wall yeah. for about a thousand hours, yeah. eventually that tennis ball That's would go true. through There's the no wall. There's no proof to that. There is proof no, to where? it. The Show me who's proof. done it. Scientific who's, proof. Who's actually done it? It has happened over the centuries. Who's thrown a tennis ball through a wall? Nobody had a tennis ball 300 so years ago. So it's never happened then? It, it will happen. Oh, it will happen. Scientific... So you think someone will be able to pass an object through another solid object, yes, I do. but you don't think we should have electric cars? No, because electric cars won't work. I see. It'll drain Just the checking. world of energy. It won't okay. work. Honestly. You're draining me of energy. This is talk sport. Yeah, you're draining me. The two mics simulcast across the UK on talk sport and talk radio. This is Talk Sport. We are the two mics. Ask Porky coming up a little bit later on. Please don't ask him anything about electric cars because you just go off on one because uh, it is now his well, pet. It's, it's, it's the modern day, you know, it's such a con trick, this. We're all being told, oh, we'll be driving around electric I have cars. To say, and... I have to say, yeah. I mean, it is, it is true that a lot of this stuff is coming from the people who told us that diesel cars were the cars to be driving. Thank you. Um, I'm yeah. not, that does not mean, however, that they're wrong about this. Uh, here's one from Matt who says, uh, if you look up Flat Earther in a dictionary, you see a picture of Porky. No, rubbish. It's I'm true. All I'm trying to be is practical and logical and commonsensical. Uh-huh. And all I get is, oh, in 23 years' time, there'll be no petrol diesel. That's a ridiculous prediction. I mean... Well, it's not a prediction. These are government rules no. and regulations. The French have already said that's what they're going to do. The British government is going to announce it later on today. The Swedish car manufacturer, yeah. Volvo, has said yeah. they're not going to make them anymore. Yes. It will happen. No, Whether you're... you like it or not, it will happen. And do you not question it? No, I don't. Do you I not don't. say, well, I don't think it can happen. I don't think there's enough electricity on no, Earth to because, be able to... because I don't know enough... Because I don't know enough about electricity yeah. and the way that they are going to develop better uh, techniques and yeah. better batteries yeah. and more efficient type cars yeah, but, to mean, be able to say to anyone... This to happen. No, but it's, it's never going to happen. Yeah, but it is happening. We're driving around in electric cars now. There are loads of electric cars already out there. Well, How about this from Gareth? Yes. I think Mike Perry's hit new levels of stupid today. He's literally speaking nonsense. No, I'm not speaking nonsense. Yes. You lot are all saying, oh, look, scientists say in 23 years' time, no petrol diesel cars left. I'm saying, well, let's wait 23 years and see what happens, OK? okay? All right. Well, if, all you want to, if you want to wait and see, then yeah. you can wait and see. Yeah, well, uh, this, how about you this see, from Sue in Tunbridge? Sorry. Hang on, let me just read you this. Yeah, go on. The call of the week, Chris telling Porky that he's admired him for ages and knows he's not a clown. Thank you. Very absolutely. good. Absolutely. So, so this guy here, his, his handle is NutriWars. Uh-huh. He says, Porky is absolutely right. Yeah. The next car breakthrough will be hydrogen cells running off a water tank. Oh, More power and no emissions. And as you well, know because that. presumably knows something about it. And no, I just or, said to you... Or possibly knows nothing about it. I said to you a few minutes ago, I said water will be the next thing that yeah. powers cars. And you... Right. Okay. Oh, no, it won't. Because right. you, so you because have no some, vision and you some, know nothing. Some guy, some conspiracy theorist on the internet tells you that water is going to be the next driver of cars. Every, so you believe that rather than... The French government, the British government, the American government, and a, a, a very, very large number of car manufacturing uh, companies. Right. Do you know the chemical symbol for water? Water. Yes. H2O. Thank you. What yes. does the H stand for? H stands for hydrogen. Hydrogen. Yes. What does hydrogen do? What do you mean, what does it do? It powers things. Well, it can do. Of course it does. And it's that's gas, when you extract it? hydrogen. Yes, it's of course it is. You extract hydrogen from water because yeah. it's in water because mm. it's H2O. I see. That is what's going to power the cars of the future. Ah. Does it, doesn't it, Anybody doesn't it, knows that. Isn't it a bit inflammable, though? No, it's oh, not inflammable. No, it? Are you no. sure? Uh, absolutely certain, yeah. Right. yeah. Okay. If it was inflammable, it wouldn't have been used in giant airships, would wasn't it? it? Well, what about the Hindenburg? The Hindenburg wasn't powered by hydrogen. What was it powered by? Uh, another gas. Well, which one? Um, it was something called Keltegron. Keltegron? Yeah, it was, yeah. Really? Yeah. And, uh, so and that was pretty flammable. Well, well, it was, but we're not going to use that in cars, are we? And anyway, well, listen. Not. What's it? What? Well... well how stupid can you be to say, oh, is hydrogen inflammable? Well, it is, isn't it? Well, petrol's inflammable, so but that, that's what powers cars. Uh, well, you oaf. petrol is what goes into the engine. Yeah, that's right. Yeah. 
Petrol but, fumes, actually. Petrol it's fumes. It's petrol fume that's inflammable, not petrol. Oh, I see. Petrol itself is not inflammable. What, but, you mean you can't set fire to petrol? No, you can't. Are you sure? I'm certain. Really? But the fumes coming so off petrol... So if you petrol, pour petrol onto... If I pour petrol onto you... Yes. ...and set fire to you... Yes. ...you wouldn't burn? I would, because the fumes from the petrol would... Uh, would ...is what is ignited. Uh-huh. But if you have petrol in a metal case... Yes. ...and you get a match, and you plunge the match straight into the petrol... Yes. It will just burn on the surface of the petrol. It will not blow up. Yes. Is it flammable or inflammable? That's a good question, isn't it? What? Flammable and combustible liquids themselves yes. do not burn. Yes. In the mixture of vapour and air. Yes, that's absolutely right. That's, so, that's exactly what I'm talking about. Isn't it about. weird that flammable and inflammable mean the same thing? Uh, it is amazing, yes. Why, is that, why, why do you think there's two words? Well, I don't know that, and I don't really I'm not care. Asking, it's not a trick question. No, well, I don't, don't care. Words are supposed to be our business. Yeah, words are our business, mm. but as I can't um, get to the bottom of the mystery of flammable <laughs> and inflammable, meaning the same thing. Right. I mean, there's plenty of words. They've missed there's... the goal already. Roma have scored against Spurs. Oh, have they? Uh... They're playing in uh, in New Jersey, in the Red Bull Stadium. Oh, they are. That's right, yeah. Mm. Um you see, the Spurs situation is interesting yeah. because uh, Miss Levy's come out tonight and said, uh, you know, the fact that we are, you know, being... A he's called bit... everybody donuts, hasn't he? Uh, I don't know. I think but, he has. But uh, the fact that he's saying that uh, the fact we've been a little bit inactive in the transfer market, right, must not in any way indicate that we are saving money to pay for the stadium. Right. Well, I beg to differ. Why? Well, when you build a new stadium, as Arsenal found to their cost, mm. you have to obviously take note. Oh, look, it was a of, penalty. Look, you can see of it all the other. Talking. Oh, yeah, yeah. Is this the first goal? This, this is, is the first goal. Oh, yeah, it is. Roma yeah. scoring a penalty. Yeah, that's right. Yeah, let's have a look at Very this. Early yeah. on in the game, only 12 minutes gone. What was the penalty given for? Uh, a foul. A f- yeah, that's, I don't know, though. Yeah. I'm not sure. I didn't see it. Yeah, yeah. That's Spurs goalkeepers looking. Uh, well, he's not going to save it because this is a rerun of, the, right. of the goal. What a stupid-looking penalty. Yeah, it was. He, he, he walked up to it yeah. and then hit it uh, I very thought that slowly. Was, you're not banned from doing that. Or you're banned from stopping, aren't you? I think you are, yeah. yeah. But, uh, no, I, I'm thinking to myself, well, look, you know, I'm not saying that there's a problem with the uh, financing of the Spurs stadium. Yeah. But when you're spending over 300 million quid, You've got to pay for it, and it's got to be paid for somewhere. And you obviously can't be, you know, the biggest spenders in the Premier League if you're involved in that project. Yeah, but so also, if you're I Daniel think... Levy, yeah. you can't really have a go at people for spending money if they've just paid you £50 million for Carl Walker, can you? No, of course not. But uh, what I'm saying is, I don't think there's any shame Mr Levy saying, look, you know, we've got to have a restructuring. Yeah. I think they're looking for a big wad of money for things like, you know, naming rights on the stadium, a long-term shirt deal, all that kind of stuff. And they'll be getting some money for the NFL as well, won't they? Uh, yeah, they'll be getting money for the NFL. Mm. Not a lot, though, I don't yeah. think. And so when all that comes in, they 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 can do it properly. But, uh, you know, they've said, uh, in fact, um, some Spurs fan, I think, was talking earlier in the day that uh, we've got a great team. Don't if it, if it ain't broke, don't fix it. And uh, don't bring in players at excessive cost who aren't going to improve the team, which well, is quite a good theory. Yeah, it is. But, I mean, it's a yeah. bit like people who say what is going on, you know, how much more money these yeah. footballers want. It is the, the way of things that the footballers are getting paid more and more money. Yes. It is the way of things that clubs are paying more and more money for individual footballers. Yes. And it's not going to stop any time soon. No, that's So right. for him to say this is unsustainable mm. uh, is a nonsense. If Real Madrid comes to him in the next, say, um, I don't know, 18 months mm. and say we'll pay you £110 million for Harry Kane, yeah, what well, do you think he's going to do? Well, he's going to take it. Yeah, exactly. He does. Exactly. Um, uh, now, on your journey into work tonight, yes. uh, you showed I am. Uh, this is a report I've had. Oh, yeah. Absolutely no sympathy for a man who was lying in the road that's in front true. of your car. No, that's not true. And instead of trying to ring 999 or yeah. get out and see if the guy was all right, you no. shouted and screamed at two that's people within trying to drag that body off the no, road because you were trying rubbish. to get to work. A complete calumny. That is an absolute and utter calumny. And I've had enough of people trying to besmirch my name over the last few days. And I'm yeah. not going to have you join them. Right. Did the did this incident take place? Uh, no. I'll tell you what incident did take place, though. Right. I was driving into work and I got to within around about half a mile of these very premises. Yes. And there's a sort of labyrinth-like way I like to come, yeah. Yeah. which cuts around the back of Borough High Street mm. and brings me out just somewhere near Southwark Bridge. Yes. Uh, Southwark Station, I should yes. say. Anyway, they came up to one of the many sets of traffic lights. Mm. And I was kind of about five cars behind. Yeah. And I could see sort of vaguely up towards the front. It looked as though there was a figure lying on the ground. So there was a man on the road? It looked like there was, yeah. You just said there wasn't? No, I didn't. That's not what I said. You did. I said you said that, it was no, a calumny that no, I'd said there was no, a body on no, the road. No, I said there was a set of circumstances which you described mm. which were incorrect. OK, okay? so okay? go on, go on. So, as usual, you've twisted the facts. Mm. Uh, you probably heard a couple of facts and no, decided no. to try and make me uh, look like some kind of a heartless creep. No. Nope. What happened was yeah. um, various cars then moved on and went through the light. I mm. then found myself as the first car yeah. at the red traffic light, right? Yeah. 
and there was a, indeed a man lying on the ground. So there was he a was, body on the ground there was on the a body road. Yeah, on the ground. As I said, yes. no, actually he was half on the pavement and half in the road. Right. right? Okay. Yeah. And I couldn't work out what was going on, but mm. there were two or three other people who were standing around. One yeah. was leaning over him. Uh, another was on the opposite side, uh, standing yeah. on the island. How by had the these previous light. five cars got round him? Well, they'd obviously just driven past him. Mm. But as as I was watching him, mm. he was kind of rolling about a bit, you know. And I couldn't so he got tell. more into the road. Well, I couldn't tell whether he was um, bladderated or, yeah. or indeed he was in some way medically um, injured. Yes. Or whether he'd been. I mean, I, I assumed he hadn't been run over. Or infirm. Uh, yeah, I assumed he hadn't been run over because mm. you know, otherwise, I presume whoever had hit him mm. would have stopped mm. and, and would mm. be trying to work out what was going but on. Did you not then indicate to the two people with him to get? that body off no, the road. that's not true at all. Did what you I ask did them do, to get any part no, of his body no, off the road? what I did was, what I did was, I wound down my window, which was also complicated, because I'll tell mm. you something else that happened. Mm. My win- Remember my window froze yes. a few months ago? Yeah. Uh, and I put it down when I was driving south uh, down the A21, mm. and it, the, suddenly all the lights went out, and I couldn't put it back up again. Yes. That had happened again, right? Yeah, so yeah, I just is, fixed it. This is it. a knackered old Jaguar, is it? Well, no, it's a brand new one, actually. Yeah, it's um, knackered, though. Mm. Uh, well, no, it's the not. The windows don't work. A car is knackered. No, the windows do work, because what happened last time was I was able to fix it more mm. or less straight away um, after I'd stopped it. So I had to do the same thing. But I was a bit unsure whether I should lower the windows. I thought I might not be able to get them back up again. Right. So I was concerned about that. So I lowered one of the windows mm. uh, and I shouted to the woman who was standing in the middle of the Yeah, the, get the that guy off the road. That's not what I shouted. No, I say? said, do you know who this guy is? Mm. And she went, no. So I edged forward a little bit and mm. I put the other window down. And I could. There was another guy who was on the phone. Mm. And I said to him, do you know who this guy is? He said, no. Uh, he said, we're just calling for an ambulance. Mm. And I said, oh, okay. I said, so there's nothing I can do then, mm. was what I said. Mm. And he said, no, we're calling for an ambulance. That's fine. Well, you I just said, wanted well, would to you drive mind? over him. Well, I didn't want to drive over him at all. But his arm, one of his arms was now kind of, a, 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 sort of spread out slightly further into the road. Right. And I said, I'm slightly worried about driving around him because, mm. obviously, you know, his arm's in the road. Yeah. Is there any chance you could just move his arm so a little bit? you did ask for the body to be removed. I didn't, I didn't demand that the body be moved. I said, is it possible for you to move See, his arm slightly out of the I way? Everything I said initially has no. now been corroborated not true. by you. No, even though you, you know, that's not shouting true. and screaming, no. no, I didn't, no, I didn't, no, I didn't. Well, you did. No, I, why, are you do, why are you behaving like such a maniac? No. Have you got some kind of a medication problem? No, not at all. I said to them, would you mind, because I was concerned for the guy, mm. I said, would you mind moving his arm out of the way? And you were concerned I was, about being held up coming to work. Well, I was a little you bit late. You care less about a man was, prostate in the street. I was a little bit late at this point. Mm. Uh, no, I was happy to see that they were organising it all. There was nothing I could do. Yeah. Uh, they made it very clear they wanted me to keep going. Mm. And so that's what I did. But I had to be very careful and gingerly edge around him. Yeah. I didn't want to run over his hand. Oh, I see. You know, yeah. hopefully he's being serviced and looked after now at the local hospital. And you'll be checking on, up on his condition, will you, as the show goes well, on? Well, what I'll do is I'll make sure anybody who uh, was at that junction, mm. um, who was uh, probably in a taxi, or something like that who listens mm. to this show would probably ring me and let me know what happened but mm. I would imagine a, a, an ambulance would have been mm. there momentarily but he didn't hang on to but make he wasn't sure un, but he, he wasn't unconscious but which if, was interesting but neither of the people you spoke to knew this man they didn't no. so therefore you were, you and they were pedestrians yeah so so you actually mm. abandoned this guy no I didn't unconscious no. on the floor in a, uh, well there were four people in front of on me on the road in no, front no. of your car there were four people there were four people in front of me in cars who drove past him without mm. even talking yeah without even putting their window down to ask what was going on yeah so you know so they didn't make contact in a way that they could have helped but you did but didn't. I did because mm. there was no need for me there was nothing for me to do mm. you know so mm. uh, but thank you very much for telling the story wrongly, as ever. Well, you, uh, you just corroborated people, uh, every fact that no, I, I didn't. initialised no, the story no. with. No, you said that I was standing there screaming Goodness at people, sake. which I wasn't doing. Mm. Uh, and in fact, I was being as helpful as I could be. Mm. But that's what you do. So you twist the facts around all the time. Mm. You just think you'd give that up one of these days. This is Talk Sport. <laughs> This is Talk Sport. We are the two mics. Got lots of good tweets coming in. Daniel says yes. Porky just needs to worry about a replacement for the rubber tyre and the amount of flat tyres he has. Well, on a that's daily absolutely basis. true. Have you had any pl- uh, 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 flat tyres ever since uh, the well, last one, well, which fi- was what Thursday, right? Yeah, fingers crossed. No, mm. but I mean, I tell you, what I did tonight. I've got yeah. a little brush now, and I went oh. around and brushed the space underneath all my tyres. Oh, really? Before coming out, just Do in case. Do you really think that that's what's happening? That somebody's actually putting something no. under them? No, I don't think so. But I think that you know, you can collect all sorts of grit under your car, and mm. it can drop off, and all that kind of. Stuff. 
So well, I mean, I drove into your yeah. road. I have to say on mm. Sunday, yes. um, and I was quietly nervous that I would mm. end up with you know four no. flat tires. No, don't but worry. I managed to. I, I seem to have made my uh, my trip into Stockbroker Belt and out again yes. without getting a flat tire of any yeah. kind. Well, exactly, and that's the way it should be. Now, yeah. luxury Lizzie says by 2023, yeah. Porky will have a whole heart working. With the power of gas coming out of his mouth, <laughs> Porky, get with the programme. No, indeed. Don't know why she's picked 2023. I suppose how long was that? Six years away. Well, well is, technology well, might have moved on so far. Well, 2022. I've got to have a false heart by then. Well, 2022 is when Volvo mm. are going to stop making cars, uh, which are run well, by petrol say. or diesel. They say. Uh, here's one from uh, Paul. He says, Porky's mm. putting that King's College Chester chemistry O-level to good use. It's actually the King's School Chester, not King's College oh, Chester. Oh, OK. Thank you. Uh, Timothy says, tell that plank seated next to you that hydrogen powered the Hindenburg and its mm. leakage caused the explosion. Explosion. Yeah, but it was leakage. Hashtag porky it's fat. Leakage yeah, but it was explosion. hydrogen, though. Yeah, of course it was you hydrogen. You said it wasn't. You said you came up with some other ridiculous name. Well, the, what they did is they made a... a uh, the, the gas that fired those... Sorry, that filled those airships... Yes. Were, were, it, wasn't, it was never one gas. It was, all, it was a combination of different gases in different compartments... Oh, I see. ...to try and well, stop it was the, the hydrogen, thing happening. It was the hydrogen that caused it well, to explode. They, they, yeah, but, I mean, you know, the, the way they kept hydrogen in those days, the way they keep hydrogen now, is very, oh, right. vastly different. Well, that's exactly what's going to be the difference between electric batteries no, now and not. electric batteries in the future. By the way, do you know the Mediterranean's on fire? What? The Mediterranean. The Mediterranean? What, the yeah. whole sea? Well, not the whole Blimey. sea, but uh, huge tracks of... Uh, Down in, is it south of France? Sardinia, France... Blimey. Italy. I was going to go to Sardinia for my holidays. OK, well, Naples in Italy's on fire. Is it? Yeah. Uh, Corsica's on fire. Really? Uh, south of France is on fire. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, I'm talking about massive fires yeah. here, man. Yeah, like forest fires. Yeah, forest fires. It looks like nearly another penalty there. Yeah. Oh, he's given a corner. Yeah. The first penalty, by the way, which other people have asked what the reason was for, and I said a foul, it was actually handball. Yeah. This looks like it should have been a penalty as well, doesn't it? Does it? Well, don't you think so? You're not yeah. watching the game. Yeah, of course I am, but there's mm. a lot to concentrate on and uh, a lot of information to That's absorb. But also, I want to pay more asked... attention to people who are happy or, or good enough to send us <laughs> tweets and texts and messages. Yes, all right. Well, let me read you a few more then. Yes. Uh, Steve says, I'm glad MG was so committed in getting to the show on time. No punctures stop him getting to work. No. Um, well, well, no punctures stop me getting to work. That's true. When I get a puncture, I have to abandon the vehicle and then yeah. make other plans to get it, you know, and I deserve yeah. huge credit for that. Of course, well, you yeah. always get huge credit where it's not due. Matt says, it's shocking how Mike Perry really goes out of his way to gerrymander the truth and stitch up MG good and proper on the radio. Every fact I told you and I told the audience about you and your not body true. on the road no. coming to work Incorrect. turned out to be exactly right, OK? No, it didn't, because you made out that I was demanding that they move the body and all sorts of horribleness going on, which wasn't the case. And then you admitted later it was only the arm of the body that you wanted well, no. to move. Well, no, all I said was that there was, there was a danger to life and, and limb, literally, because yeah. the limb was in the middle of the road. Yeah. Liam says, Porky's been very obtuse tonight. Has he been on the Red Bull and Benelin? No, I haven't, actually. Are you sure? In fact, I've been on a bit of a diet over the last week or two. Oh, is that right? Uh, you don't think you've lost enough weight? No, I've decided to uh, purify my body, right. and the only thing I've uh, really had in terms of fluid... Uh, over the weekend is water. Mm. Yes. Well, you weren't doing much purification of your body on when on Saturday nights. Well, on Saturday tell. night was charity do, and I had to sort of uh, alter my behavioural pattern a little bit, uh-huh. but not much. Okay. Mm. Uh, Dave says uh, more, Mike Perry is correct. Uh, you also say I don't read out ones which are in favour. Uh, MG, how many government U turns have we seen in the last twelve months alone? Exactly. You think this twenty-three year pledge will happen? Well, who knows whether not. it will? But what I do know uh, yeah. is that the on, um, onset of, of progress mm. is definitely moving in the direction of moving away from fossil fuel driven cars mm. and moving towards electric cars. And I think it's just going to happen because it's one of those things. Yeah. And it's not about whether this government will make a U-turn because this government will probably make loads of U-turns between now and 2023. Honestly, um, you, you, however, you get taken in so No, easily. I don't. If, if mm. car manufacturers are going to stop making cars that you put petrol in, mm. you won't be able to own a car that you put petrol in. It's that simple. Unless you're going to make your own car. Car. Yeah, until I tell you what, until we run out of the, you know, the, the materials to make the batteries, and then we go back to the Middle East and we say, can you open up all those oil uh, wells again, please? Because I'm afraid that's the only thing that reliably powers cars yeah, right. on planet Earth. Well, that's another one. I mean, who knows what's going to be happening in the place where most of the oil comes from, i.e., the Middle East? Yes. In 20 years? Yes. You know, it might have all been blown up. All the oil might have disappeared. No, it won't. There might the have been oil- a nuclear bomb gone off. No, 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 no. There might be political strife and tension on yes. the surface, but underneath it all, the the supplies of oil and gas on Earth are endless, right? They are they're inexhaustible. They are. No, they're not. And do you know why? They're absolutely not endless. Do you know why? Uh, they are not endless. Because we've only ever found about 1% of all the oil and gas that's, yes. that's on Earth. But as you know, as with moment, coal, it yeah. becomes uneconomically viable to no. actually go and get it. No, and as each decade goes by, yeah. and as each century goes by... Mm. 
there is more and more oil and gas being formed beneath the crust of the earth. There is, sure, but it's not being formed. That. Yeah, but it's not being formed as quickly as it's being taken out of the ground. That's the point. That's why it will run out. There is so much of it. It's like having a big glass of water in the fridge, right? Yeah. You might keep pouring some in, but if you keep pouring more out, yeah. then after a while it will be empty. Yes, but if I gave you a thimble and sent you to an Olympic-sized swimming pool yes. and said, empty this swimming pool with that thimble, yes. please, uh-huh. you'd never be able to empty it, yeah, would you? Yeah, you would. That's the scale. Yes, you would. That is the scale of no, the supplies no. of oil and gas well, on Earth compared well, to demand. That's not it true. Is, it is. Paul it's says, a very good, Polk is rambling on about very meteorites good and calling people dinosaurs. Yeah. That's why I love this show. Yep. Mm. Yep, you do? Yes. Yeah, good. Yeah, anyway, I'm, the, I'm the, the general rule seems to be, and I know how you like to be popular, yeah. the general rule seems to be you got a bit mad. I'm no, afraid. no, I haven't gone a bit mad. You know. Now, if you remember, a little earlier on, I said to you, what would have happened if the meteorite had missed Earth? Uh, no, you said that to Chris, actually. To who? To Chris. Chris. Chris, the guy that rang in. Oh, yeah, OK, yeah, fine, yeah. Now, the point is, that's because I've been reading the Scientific Journal over the uh, weekend. Yes. And this is a very credible theory, uh-huh. right? Uh, let's say... It's an old story, this, isn't it? We talked about this a while ago. No, 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 this is a brand new theory. No, it's not. We talked about this a while ago, because yeah. I remember you putting it to um, some dinosaur expert that we had, on, I think, yeah. last week. Yes. About the fact that it may well have been the case that the world would have developed very differently mm. had the meteorite missed. That's right. But, but it didn't miss. Listen, 66 million years ago, the monstrous asteroid that gouged out the hole we now know as the Gulf of Mexico, thus ending the long reign of the dinosaurs, supposing instead it had narrowly missed our planet, the dinosaurs would have grazed on regardless and the tiny mammals racing between their giant feet would not have taken over the planet and evolved into us. Yeah, I know. Okay. Well, I mean, we evolved from dinosaurs. No, no, we no. Well, you're not listening, you stupid fool. Yeah, I am fool. listening. Why are you calling me stupid? Because I just said to you, the mammals racing between their giant feet would not have taken over the planet yeah. and evolved into us. OK. Right? So you think we evolved from the mammals that were swimming in the sea? No, running around beneath their feet. Oh, I, I wish see. you'd listen. OK. Now, would some other self-aware, highly intelligent being have still appeared? Many people think so. One paleontologist has suggested it would have been a dinosauroid uh-huh. with two legs, two arms, a big brain, and apart from some off-putting lizard-like features, uh-huh. like a long tongue and that sort of stuff, a very human-looking <laughs> aspect so, of well, a creature. Apart from looking like a lizard. Yeah, that's right. Yeah, yeah, it would have been yeah. just like a human. Others have imagined it would look more like a bird with a long tail and a huge beak, but very clever. I see. The belief that we, or something much like us, was inevitable, given the conditions on Earth, is a new scientific study known as... Uh-huh. And I've discovered this. What's this? Determinism. 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 How have you discovered it, then? Because I'm the first to uh, discover the paper on it. You, so you've discovered somebody else's discovery, is what Yes, that's me. right, yeah. Right. That it, doesn't mean you've discovered it. Its fiercest opponent has been a guy called Stephen J. Gould. Oh, yeah. Uh, he wrote a book called Wonderful Life, argued that if you could rerun the whole evolutionary history of life on Earth, random mutations uh-huh. and environmental accidents would ensure a different outcome every time. Yes. Gould was so brilliant and such a gifted writer that he appears to have closed the case. Far no. from it! The case has recently been bus wide open. Okay. So, I mean, basically this is just a, a, a sort of a what if something else had happened rather than something that actually did happen. Yes, that's, so, a, that's ha- right. So how is that in any way a theory? Because it's not. Do you know what the, one of the most clever animals on Earth is? What is it? The platypus. Is it? The platypus may seem ripe for mockery. The duck-billed platypus. That's right. Yeah. But it's remarkably sophisticated in many ways. The bill, for instance, is covered... Yeah, I'll get this. This yeah. is fantastically interesting. Yeah. The bill is covered with tens of thousands of minute sensors, many of them sensitive to touch and yeah. able to detect changes in water pressure really? produced by mm. the swish of a fish's tail. Swish. The rest electroprecepters yeah. that can precisely locate food mm. via the minute electrical charges their prey produces <laughs> as they move. Really? Yeah. I'll tell you a joke about a platypus, if you like. No, I don't want to joke about a platypus, no, thank got, you. It's much more interesting than what you're saying. No, no, no. Uh, and It's d- like reading out of a child's encyclopedia. No, no, it's not. It is. It's not, because I can tell you a fantastic fact now. Well, I'll tell you a joke about a platypus first. Uh, well, no, 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 let me tell this fact first. No, Right, the fact is the time, that during the course of our life, animals on Earth have evolved. For instance, yeah. did you know that fish are making themselves smaller? Are they? 
each decade that goes by. Well, that'll be handy because we've just had another uh, in, instruction, haven't we, to eat smaller portions yeah, of fish and chips. To slip, so if the fish themselves are making themselves smaller, then that would be good. To slip through trawler nets so right. they don't get caught. OK. Did you know that uh, the antler, the size of antlers on yeah. deer yeah. are getting smaller are and they? smaller to okay. save themselves being shot? Really? And within 30 years, if there are any... Elephants left on Earth. Yes, they will not have tusks. You see, one of them was swept out of the sea the other day. Didn't two, make, two didn't, didn't use the uh, the, uh, the trunk as a snorkel. They did two of them, two baby elephants yeah, in they, Sri Lanka. Yeah, but they didn't breathe through the. They old did, snorkel. and they were rescued. No, they weren't. They were. They were rescued because they had to be because they yeah. couldn't breathe. Anyway, yeah. let me tell you the platypus joke. Okay. Platypus goes into a shop and asks for a bottle of beer. Yeah. And the guy behind the counter says, "Will that be cash or charge?" And he says, "What do you think?" It's your joke, not put, mine. Put it on my bill. Put on my bill. <laughs> this is Talk Sport. Pathetic. The two mics simulcast across the UK on Talk Sport and Talk Radio. Sport, we are the two mics. Steve the cabbie's been a bit rude. He says, What about that rare species, mm. the Red Bull filled fatty puss? <laughs> hey, that's a bit harsh, isn't <laughs> that it? That is a bit harsh. Yeah. Uh, and here's one from uh, G Man who says, yeah. uh, The peak oil forecast for 2020, lads. Mm. Uh, that's why we have the rush for alternative energy sources. Mm. Good show, though, uh, with your loopy loo pal. Yeah, yeah. It's not loopy loo. All I do is get down to the facts, yes, okay? Indeed. Well, speaking of facts, let's yeah. get down to them with Mark Donaldson from ESPN. Mark, a very good morning to you. Morning, gentlemen. How are you both? Very well, Very indeed. well indeed, Mark. Now, Very I'm, well conscious, indeed. I'm conscious of the last time we spoke, you thought we kept throwing you one hand grenade after another, so <laughs> yeah. we're going to try very hard not to do that <laughs> yeah. uh, tonight. We're watching the Tottenham-Roma game. Uh, it's in uh, uh, New Jersey, not a million miles away from where you are. Spurs very much in the news tonight because of what Daniel Levy said about too many you know, people spending too much money and all the rest of it. I'm not sure, really, um, what we're seeing here, whether we're seeing Tottenham... Um, playing a lot of games before the season starts, which are going to mean something, or whether they whether it's, it's just a kind of a friendly run-out to make a bit of money? Well, it's squad rotation. Um, they're part of the International Champions Cup, which many teams are. You've got the North American version, the China version, or the Asia version, and the Singapore version. Mm. So uh, it's set up by uh, a friend of Sir Alex Ferguson called Charlie Stolitano. It's his company that are, that are dealing with it. And it's been a success over here. We've got the Classico down in, in Miami. Uh, coming up at the weekend. Obviously, Spurs are in action right now uh, against Roma. I was very impressed with them against PSG. Yeah. Um, I did PSG in their first game against Roma and, and thought, I mean, they're, they're, they're a right good side. But Spurs found a way to win. And whether it was Eric Dyer chasing down the goalkeeper or whether it was Christian Eriksen putting in the top bin from, from distance. And, and obviously, they made changes at half time with Kane and Ali coming on. They started tonight. Um, Onoma keeps his place. He could be one to look for. Um, for the forthcoming season, he's not going to start Josh Anoma. He kind of he's, he's slightly similar to Delhi Ali, but he started tonight uh, in the game down in uh, in Harrison, New Jersey, and I think he'll be a, a decent, important squad player for Spurs this season. Right. Josh Anoma. And it looks like a pretty full stadium. I mean, is is this getting more and more popular? This kind of pre-season stuff that goes on. Well, they're not daft. They put the, they put the games in the stadium that they think um, will look the best. I mean, if it's if it's this game. Um, Spurs against Roma. You're, you're not going to stick this in a sixty thousand um, stadium because it's not. You're not going to fill it. I mean, I've been to the the Red Bull Arena. I think it's like twenty four, twenty five thousand. I mean, it's the perfect stadium for it because it's close enough to New York. Uh, it's only twenty minutes by train, so you can easily get there if the Spurs fans are, are staying there. There's obviously loads of Spurs fans um, at the game against PSG, the old Citrus Bowl down in Orlando as well. So, and the classic goes that. Uh, it's at the Miami Dolphin Stadium, the Hard Rock um, Stadium at the weekend. So they're, they're not daft when it comes to putting games in places that the stadiums are going to be full enough. Um, and, I mean, the first game I did was PSG Roma in Detroit, and that was nearly a full house as well uh, in a baseball stadium. So it's it's a success um, so far, uh, and I think it will continue to be so because the, ma- the managers are getting the players uh, having a decent run out. Um, and there's, there's a lot of good downtime as well. Spurs spent time at Disney. It's not just a kind of, we're going to the States. The States is somewhere 
where you can go and you can enjoy yourself away from the football. And that's important when you're touring as well. You've got to keep the players interested and not bored. Yeah, you're absolutely right. Now, Mark, Spurs are there. You're watching them now. What do you make of this uh, statement from Mr Daniel Levy that, uh, you know, it's unsustainable to be buying players at the sort of price that other clubs, competitors of Spurs, are buying them? Isn't he really just masking the fact that Spurs have a very expensive stadium to pay for and they ain't got anything in the transfer budget for this summer because it doesn't matter how good your team is. When Mr Levy says we're only going to buy players to improve the team, every Premiership manager wants to improve his squad, even if they've won the Premier League. OK, I'm not, I'm not sure I, I, I how big a, a story it is in the UK with regards to Spurs new stadium, but over here, I mean, it's common knowledge that the NFL is paying a chunk of the cost. Yeah. Because that's where the NFL uh, are going to be playing their, or the, the NFL games will, will take place. Um, and going down the road, there's an outside chance of, of maybe a, an NFL franchise, whether it's Jacksonville or whatever, coming over to London, and they would be based at the new White Hart Lane. So mm. I get his comment. Um, as far as what's being spent these days is, is concerned, I mean, you've, you've got to spend to keep up. I mean, look at Huddersfield. I think they've broken the transfer record two or three different times. Yeah, it's, it's difficult because if you see this Mbappe race, and a lot of it is just kind of agents and journalists and yeah. whatever, yeah. and then they're trying, to, they're, trying, they're, they're trying to get more money for their player. Neymar, will he stay, will he go? Mbappe, will he stay, will he go? You've got to pay the going rate, otherwise you're going to be left alone. Yes. Now, there's probably only three or four teams in Europe that can afford a Neymar that can afford an Mbappe. Yeah. Now, are Spurs going to be the team that decides or the, the club that are like, well, we'll just let them go and, and pay for that? Because I don't think with a new stadium, and I know the NFL are going to be spending um, money on the new Spurs stadium, but I don't think that, that Spurs would, right now would be in the market for those types of players. So I think I think he's been coy and cautious with his comments. Yeah. Yes, indeed. It's half-time, by the way, just over there at the Red Bull yeah. Arena in Harrison. It's 0-1, uh, Tottenham losing 1-0 to Roma. Yeah. Roma. Um, what about, uh, unfortunately, I have to bring this up because your team hearts have gone out of the Scottish League Cup tonight, <laughs> uh, Mark. I'm no, sorry no, to no, have no, to no, tell no, you. No. Peter Head uh, knocked no. him out. Now, when you talk about money being available, I mean, there's a team, I presume, <laughs> in Edinburgh that haven't got a hope in hell of buying anybody, have they? Not really, but we're, we're fortunate. I mean, this is the, uh, the first time we've taken part in the League Cup because they weren't good enough to come for us in Europe. But it is a group stage uh, competition, so we still have a chance, even although we lost to Peter Head, if we beat Dan Fermlin at the weekend, then we'll qualify for the next round. So it's not the kind of losing your own. There is a group stage now for for the League Cup. But as far as money's concerned, we've just signed Kyle Lafferty. Hmm. Now, Kyle is our, I mean, you know where he's been. I mean, he's, he's Northern Ireland striker. He was over in Italy. He was down in England. Um, and he was at Rangers. And, and he's, he's, he's not a journeyman by any sort of the imagination, but he's, he's someone that will do well for us. He scored again. Um, but this is the kind of, this is the pool that we're fishing in right now. Um, and I think it's the same as, as kind of Rangers can maybe afford a little bit more. Aberdeen can afford a little bit more as well. The Celtic are way out in front. Now, they obviously got a big one against Rosenberg. Um, and for the, for the sake of Scottish football, I hope they get through to the group stages. But what it's going to do, it's going to make them richer and it's going to leave the, the rest behind. So this is the danger that we have in Scottish football is that we, we have our own little kind of groups who we're competing against. For Hearts, it's probably Rangers and Aberdeen. Um, for St. Johnston, Teams like that, they're fighting above the they're punching above the weight. But for Celtic, I mean, they've spent what four and a half million on another midfielder. Um, they're just getting further and further away from the rest. And I don't know how or what it's going to take for them to be caught. They're just going to go in the wilderness, and they're going to continue to get more powerful and more stronger. Uh, and as a result, they're, they're just going to keep winning league titles. Yeah, because mm. you can't do what some people want, uh, you know, English clubs to do because it makes them less competitive in Europe. And that is to make sure that, you know, there's some kind of a level playing field that other clubs get money to spend that Celtic at the moment are spending on their own. I mean, you can't really, you can't really level the playing field, really, can you? No, you can't. And that's the problem. Because right now, Celtic have to kind of speculate to accumulate. They've got an excellent manager. He's proven that last season. He's proven that before he even went to Celtic. So that's a box that's ticked. If they don't qualify for the Champions League, and bear in mind they do have the slightly easier route into the group stages because there's a Champions route and a non-Champions route uh, as, the, uh, as the English teams that, uh, that aren't Chelsea or aren't qualifying for the group stage will find out. So Rosenberg will be tough. 
and then they will be seeded in the final qualifying round. Um, so it, the difficulty for Celtic is kind of, right, do we spend enough money to ensure that we get into the Champions League? There's no guarantee that that's the case. And then if they don't, they're left with a lot of kind of unhappy players that thought they were coming for Champions League football. But the other thing is as well, we can spend some cash after they've qualified if they do so. And that's another thing. Do you gamble and get the players in now? Or do you wait? I think the squad that Celtic have right now, with the players that they have available, are probably good enough to get into the group stages. But they have to decide if they spend more money to ensure that may be the case and to give them a better chance. They do. Mm-hmm. Uh, Peter sent us a tweet to say he went to the Man United Real Madrid game last weekend. Tickets ranged from 95 to $525 at face value. And they had about 67000 there. And that's why these clubs come. I suppose Man United Real Madrid is a kind of top tier type uh, arrangement, yeah. more so than Tottenham against Roma, right? Yeah, you, I mean, you both know, having spent time over here as well, that concert ticket prices, sport event ticket prices are far more expensive over here mm. than they are in the UK. Now, I was fortunate enough when I was back covering Wimbledon to go to the UK gig at, uh, at Twickenham, right. and it was 170 a ticket. Now, when I left the UK in 2010, you weren't paying three digits, three figures for a ticket to either a sporting event or to a musical event. So, is it, I, mean, I think I saw last week as well when I was home, the prices for the McGregor Mayweather pay-per-view are, are crazy. But yeah. that's what we have over here. I mean, it's in the beat, and it has been for a while to get it in HD. Mm. And I think I read it's something like, what, 80 to £100 if you want the full HD package from um, for, for McGregor against Mayweather. Is, is Britain being too cheap as a result of that? But if they, if they become ticket prices like they have over here, I think the empty seats would, would tell a story. I, I think it's important that people in, in Britain who set ticket prices don't get too greedy. And, and on that, I would, I would hope that the, the away fans get a deal. I think 20 is plenty with the campaign. And I think I'll certainly support that as well because it's easy to get greedy, especially with the money that's being paid for some of these players. Yeah, no, I think you're absolutely Indeed. right. Mark, yeah. listen, thank you very much Thanks, indeed. Mark. I was going to ask you a little bit about the golf, but it's all about a time. Yeah, uh, out of time. Because uh, last time we spoke, it was just before the golf kicked off. It was. Uh, and, of course, Jordan Spieth ended up winning it. A lot of people were moaning about the fact that if he played that badly, yes. he shouldn't have been able to win. He shouldn't have been able to hit the ball onto the practice ground. Yeah. And he shouldn't have been able to still be in play. Have, have you heard the conspiracy theory no. about it all? No, what's that? Well, he plays with a, te- a teetliced ball. Tightless. Tightless yeah. ball, right? Yeah. And all the action for 22 minutes was mm. in front of the tightless um, oh, really? truck. <laughs> that, uh, yeah. Okay. That, uh, we'll come back to that. Yeah, exactly, because yeah. Because we are out of time officially. This is Talk Sport. The two mics simulcast across the UK on Talk Sport and Talk Radio. Hello, this is Tim Vine on Talk Sport. It's Mike Parry's postbag. I can't wait to see what's in there. Postman pork, postman pork, I eat my chips with just a fork. Cos then I can still talk. Now here we are, there's a tune we haven't heard for a little while. It certainly uh, is. A little bit of Postman Pork. Now, yeah. uh, for those who wish to watch the Postman Pork yeah. episode as well as listen to it, yes. uh, it is now currently live on Facebook. Is it? Uh, I'm about to put out a little uh, a little link to it, okay. uh, which I shall do momentarily right. uh, while you're preparing yourself to okay. open the first package. Well, I'll just get the package, yes. Here yes. we go. Yeah, yeah, go on. Why don't you get the packages and see how, we, uh, and see how we're looking at it. It's not, there's nothing massive right. there. There's no, no more. There's no collection of LPs or anything. Collection there, of LPs. There? This is just a selection that have okay. come in. All right. I want you all to to send me as many uh, communications as you want to Postman Pork, uh-huh. Talk Sport, yes. 18 Hatfields, yes. London, SE18 DJ. And if uh, if we can get round to it, we'll open as many as we possibly can. Here's mm. a selection to start with tonight, OK? okay. Right, let's open the first one right. here. I'm just now putting out the link, yeah. so uh, just look on our Twitter page, the two mics, okay. uh, and you'll be able to watch it as well. Right, have you put that out? Is it on the two it's mics? It's going now. So It's going now, yeah. so uh, I will get round to uh, refuting that, OK? Yes. So that we all know what we're up to, OK? Yes. Yes, good, good, good. As right. long as we all know what we're up to. Yeah, we, we all go. know what we're up to. So right. uh, are you opening yeah. it? Yeah, I'm opening it. Yeah, it I'm going like to two mics. It. No, no, here. here no, two mics. Should... No, what, what two mics. You... No. Watch Postman Pork live now. Yeah. Right. Yeah, just retweet that. I'll retweet that. That's underway. Right, let's open this first package here. Here we go. Yes. And this feels to me like it could be confectionery or something like confectionery. that. Confectionery? It's always very kind. Oh, very nice. It. So open this here. Here we go. Right, what have we got here? We have, ugh, 
Yeah. Clear Spring Organic Sea Veg Crispies, OK? Sea Veg. The sort of thing that I would never in my life put mm. to my lips, OK? Clear Spring Organic Sea Veg Crispies. And then the second one... Toasted Nori Snack. This is from overseas somewhere, isn't it? Well, uh, I'm going to tell you this. Products second. of Korea, it says. Yeah, free gift inside. Uh, here we go. Mm. High in fibre, gluten-free, crunchy coconut bites. OK. Crunchy coconut bites. Oh, this is, this is also stuff. from Korea, perhaps, as well. Well, let's have a look where it's from. And then let's find out. Oh, the third one. Organic pumpkin snack milk chocolate. Okay. okay. This says, what's so great about coconut bites? Mm. So high in fibre, gluten-free, yep. no added sugar, part of your fibre day, yep. and under 150 calories. Uh, right. Now, this all comes uh, with a postcard of sausages. Oh, yeah. From the Hunberger Rostbreitwürstchen. OK. All right. It's come from Germany. OK. And it's come from a guy called Roy Dracula. I think we've had uh, communications from, from before. Isn't he the guy from Croydon? Uh, well, Dracula. it says, Dear Sir Mike, just back from the Nuremberg Sausage Festival. Wow. <laughs> Nuremberg Sausage Festival. That's somewhere to be. Is that where he got this stuff from? Hence the postcard. No. As connoisseurs of savoury snacks, I thought you old MG might like to try these edible oddities. Well, thank you very much indeed. Well, the only one I like to look of, to be honest, is the yeah. pumpkin snack. With milk chocolate. Well, don't delicious, the coconut bites look all right? Delicious Belgian chocolate. Right. Well, the coconut bites might be all right, but they've got okay. chia seeds in them. Oh, and chia, chia seeds. seeds, to me, reminds me of those, those things you used to get, the yeah. chia pet, yeah, where yeah, grass yeah. would grow out of a oh, horse or something. Oh, golly, yeah, I don't need that. Right, now then, this is a letter I'm opening here, OK? okay. Could be a card, could be a letter. Could I'm be. taking it out. Yeah. One thing I like about it, it's got a first-class stamp on, OK? Has it? You have much more chance of getting a Postman Pork uh, sort of airing. Endorsement. Yeah, endorsement, yeah. if you've got a first-class stamp. I yeah. do not believe in second-class stamps. Uh, they indicate to me a miserable person, OK? Yeah, I don't even know how much they are to Right, reason. now then, this card says, Till death us do part. Oh, yeah. Rather an attractive drawing of two skulls. Right? Two skulls? Two skulls, oh, yeah. 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 But then it says on the back, to both our heroes, the two Mikes, so mm. this is extended from Postman Pork to MG as well. Uh-huh. Uh, P.S. We have two weather spoons, and this comes from York. Oh, yeah. Now it says, Giovanna Giaio and Jonathan Atkinson request the pleasure of your company at their evening wedding reception. Yes. Oh, this is an invite to a wedding reception. We've been invited to a wedding. Yeah, yeah right. we, we both have. We both have. Uh, it's on Saturday, the 28th of October at 7 pm yes. at the Principal York, Station Road, York. Uh-huh. Uh, please contact Giovanna or Jonathan by 31st of July. Yeah. So it's Giovanna Giello and Jonathan Atkinson. Sounds Italian. Well, one of them is Giov- Jonathan Atkinson. It's not Giovanni. No, it's Giovanna, Giovanna. you know, with an A at the end. Uh, Giello. And Jonathan Atkinson, request the pleasure of your company. They're even going to show. Look, it's very, very kind of you guys. Mm. Uh, and they've got a, you know, rather a. Figurative sort of invitation cover on the front there. Yeah. Um, Let's have a look. Uh, well, have a look at it, certainly. October, we don't even know what we're doing tomorrow, and I mean that sincerely, folks. It's a, so bit, how... kind of, uh, it's a bit kind of uh, dog-eared, isn't it, on the back? No, it it's meant to though... look it. No, it's meant to it's look aged. It's meant to look old. Yeah, it? it's, it's, it's designed like that. We don't know what we're doing tomorrow, seriously, here at TalkSport, so we can't tell you what we're doing in October. Right, now mm-hmm. then, let me see what we've got here. I've got a book. Uh uh, we have two Weatherspoons. That means they have two Weatherspoons in York, presumably. Yes, that's yeah. right. Yeah, yeah. Have you, not, have you been to the Weatherspoons in York? No, I haven't, no. Ah. Right, now then, it says here, mm. uh, Porky, what is talent? How do you fulfil your potential? How do you create a winning team? Yes. And I've been sent a book, uh, a book proof, actually, uncorrected book proof, oh, yeah. called The Edge, mm. Uh, to be published on the 7th of uh, September. Right. What business can learn from football? It's called The Edge. The okay, Edge. Well, thank it's not you a very book much about indeed. the uh, U2 guitarist. No, football writer, broadcast director of football consultancy, a guy called Ben Littleton. OK. Fascinating journey behind the scenes. And this is sent to me by some chap called Ben Norris. Ben Norris. Who says, I thought you would like this book. Well, oh, okay. it's very kind of you, and it's something we'll have a look at later. Yes. But we've got much, much more posts to get through at the moment, All so... Right. Let's have a look at the book. Can I have a look at the book as well? Yeah, you can have a look at the book, yeah. It might be some uh, pearls of wisdom from it. Yeah, pearls of wisdom. There There you go. go. Okay, Okay. right, next one. Mm. Postman Pork. Yes. This has got something in it. It's uh, registered and it's first class, so that makes it a a candidate to be opened. Registered is good, isn't it? Yeah, registered is good, yeah. Yeah. It's got a a, a bibliography at the back and it's also got an index. An index. Any book with an index is worth reading. Yeah, okay, you say that, do you? Wolfgang Schollhorn is uh, one of the... uh, Chat, chapter right. headings. That's what we've got here. Ah, oh, mm. now this is very interesting. Very interesting. Mm. Now then, I'll read. It's a, there's some sort of device here, yeah. and it looks like a, a cutting device or something. Well, like a, a knife, you mean? A knife or something? Yeah. Let's really? Have a look. Yeah. It looks like it could be another snack, doesn't it? No, no, no. So I'm opening it. Right. Mm. Uh, I'm taking it out. Yeah. 
and it's got postman pork written on it. This is a very, very nice utensil. What is it's, that? It's like a butter knife. Oh, I know what this is. This is a yeah. guy who had put, posted on Twitter that he was training to be a blacksmith. Oh, yes. And he made this. This was his first thing that he made. Right. Which he was going to send you. Isn't that lovely? Now, so lovely. you should say uh, should say on the, na- on the name right. of the, of the note. Let's uh, find out who it is. This, I think that was his was, first uh, attempt at a bit of That's very heavy. And it was sent in a parcel, so they put a lot of effort into this. Right, it comes from Dave Price. Yeah, there you go. Uh, right, uh, two mics. Uh, hi, guys. Here's the finished letter opener. It's a bit basic as my first attempt. Just want to thank you for the shows and podcasts. I'm an avid listener and they have been a great help through some tough times over the years, keeping my spirits raised. I'm sure many other listeners feel the same. Hope to come to a live show soon. Keep up the good work. Dave Fry. Well, Dave, thanks very much. I thought it was a butter knife, actually, yes. because it looks just like a butter yeah. knife. It's got the width of it. Right. And well, I might use you, it as a butter you, knife. You could use it as a butter yeah, knife yeah, because I'm, you do eat a lot of butter, don't you? Yeah, I'm How's sure. the butter uh, mounting going, by the way? Butter mounting's good. I'm not sure been, about been... the paint, which says the two mics and post and pork. Oh, you it. think it might come off? Uh, yeah, but I'm definitely going to keep that. That is an invaluable yeah. memento. Well, Thank you can you. use it as a letter opener, can't you? I can use it as a letter opener. I can mm. indeed. Right, let's get... Uh, so what's what we got here? Uh, this is the next one. Here we go. Yeah, here go it on. is. What's next? It's here. It's post from pork again. Real post. You could pork. use the letter opener on the letters you wrote me now. Well, I you? could, yeah, but I don't need to at the moment. Okay. So, oh, here we go. It's got chalky in it. Okay, it's very kind of you to send chalky. us this. Yeah. But you never know what sort of heat process it's been through. You know what I mean? What do you mean? Well, chocolate goes through sort of heat. Fries, peppermint cream, All right. dairy milk. I didn't that know they still go, made that. Won't, I didn't either. It won't go wasted, honestly, in this building. There's plenty of people who'll be snapping those. But, My uh, mother used to like fries, uh, chocolate yeah, cream. Do you remember the fries one that wasn't just chocolate cream? It was multi-flavours, uh, like no. red and... No, I remember the uh, purple, uh, purple yeah, packaging, which yeah. was, I think was fries, chocolate cream. Right, dear Sir Mike, I agree with you yeah. about crazy golf. There's not much skill involved. It's a great course, though, on Bogner Regis Seafront. I've been to Bogner Regis. The only reason to go to that town. Mm. I was once four under par on the course, but struggled against the sea breeze on the back nine. Really? Especially on the tenth of my ball. This comes from uh, Roy, another Roy. Uh, thank How you very much. Struggle on the back nine of a crazy golf course. I don't course know. I was thrown off the course by the attendant. Never been back since <laughs> uh, because I got upset with myself. Don't that put you off though? You could challenge old MG to a game. People would pay to watch that. Well, thank you very well, much. Do you indeed. remember we went and had a game of yes, crazy golf, yes. which was also doubling up as a game of sort of crazy snooker? Do you yes, remember that place? Yes, in, I do. Uh, yes, in the city yeah. of London. In the city of London, where you there were cheated snooker horribly. tables all over the place. Yeah, yeah. we've still got the video of that. Yeah, I think we have. We'll have to rescue it and put it on to. Uh... We may have to. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Right, see, we've got here. Yeah, we've seen one. the time, by the way. Yeah, well, it's very time kind. Time is, is up against right, us. Right, we'll make this the last one. Okay, okay then. here it comes out. Here we go. What do you got there? It's, it's a, like a poster. It's no, it's from Panini. Oh yeah, it's the UEFA Women's Euro 27, the Netherlands official sticker album. Oh cool for the Women's World Cup. Is okay, that still going on. Still going on. Yeah, and it comes with some stickers, and this comes from Ben Cottershall. Ben, ben Co- thank you very much ben indeed. Ben Cottershall. Yeah, and he's from Rochdale. Oh, is he? Yeah, Rochdale. It's, uh, it's... is that uh, is it something that you can actually fill in then? Or... Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because look. There's there's the cover of it, yeah. right? Thank you very much indeed, Ben. Uh, there's the uh, the first, lionesses. Your didn't first they, two stickers. Didn't lionesses. they play? Didn't they win it or something? Uh, well, hang on. Uh, I thought they won it, didn't they? No, no, no. That was the women cricketers who won the World oh, Cup. That was wasn't the women it, the other day. Oh, right, okay. This is now the start of the UEFA Women's Euro 27 in the Netherlands. Yeah. Uh, let's find out when it gets going. They beat Spain, though, didn't they? Uh, they, I'm pretty sure the Lionesses beat Spain. They beat Spain. They beat Spain. Yeah. There's no doubt about that. They did, indeed. Right. And, so the so uh, competition's still ongoing, then? Uh, of course, competition's ongoing. What does it say about when the final is? When it, the final? It, the final? It must, it must say, mustn't it? Yes, it will say in here hmm. somewhere. I yeah. don't know. Let me have a look here. You know, yeah. oh, this this must be the first ever. Uh, uh, women's uh, soccer sticker album. Do you think? Uh, football sticker album. Yeah, yeah. Well, there might have yeah, been I'm others. Sure. There might, I bet there's been others for the World Cup and stuff like yeah, that. Yeah, well, it could have been. Could mm. have been. Anyway, look, that's a very nice gift. Thank you very much indeed. Very that's, nice. uh, that's great. Well, that's a very uh, interesting collection there's, of there's, things. There's, there's loads more here which we could have opened, but I'm afraid we haven't really had time. Uh, but look, that doesn't matter. I just want to say thank you to everybody who got involved. It's very kind of you. Indeed. Well done. That was Postman Pork. That was Postman Pork. Postman pork, postman pork, I eat my chips with just a fork. Cause then I can still talk. It's a wonderful night, gotta take it from me. It's a wonderful night, come on and break it on down. It's a wonderful night, gotta shake it from me. It's a wonderful night, come on and break it on down. It's a wonderful night, everybody. 
Thursday. Let's talk sport. We are the two mics. Coming up a little bit later on, it's Ask Porky. You can get the wit and wisdom of the man uh, later on. However, not everybody has been uh, impressed with that so far. Olaf says, Porkmeister, what are you on, man? Uh, you're what? like a blithering, out-of-control buffoon. What are you on about? Seems a bit harsh. What are you on about? Uh, I don't know what he's on about. A couple of announcements, though. Brendan Ooh. says, it's my 40th birthday today, and it would be great to have a shout-out from my two favourite presenters. Please keep up the good work. So good. that's Brendan's 40. Brendan, OK, Brendan, 40th birthday. Yeah. It's a... Uh, it's a major birthday, the 40, you know, because you have to then come to grips with the fact that you're an adult. Uh, I know you should feel like an adult in your 30s as well, but you a lot of us really. don't. And uh, when you're 40, you're only 10 years away from 50. And uh, it is, a, it is a, uh, for me, it was a real sort of signpost birthday, you know? Yes. Uh, I'd, uh, I'd been very successful in the world of uh, newspaper journalism. And then at 40, believe it or not... Uh, I went through a sort of transitional uh, phase. Did you? Yes. Transitional? Yes. Uh, is that over yet? Uh, yeah, it's over, yeah. It? Tr- yeah, well, it was, it, was the, it was the end of a sort of glorious newspaper career ah, and yes. the start of something else, you oh, know okay. what I mean? All yeah. oh, right, something yeah. which turned out to be infinitely better, probably. Yes, exactly, yeah. Uh, yeah. Now, here's one that's been around for a little while because it came yeah. in on Facebook, um, I think it was last week. Right. And it's from um, uh, a guy by the name of Richard who says, any chance I can get a happy birthday to my nine-year-old son, Tyler? Yeah. Uh, he's he's a, a Villa fan, he says, uh, and he listens to the show every week. Tyler, yeah. age nine, uh, listen, my boy. Your team are not going through good times at the moment, although they've had some encouraging pre-season games. I've noticed that. But uh, many think they're still going to struggle because of the depth of the squad. However, don't give up the faith, my boy. We can't all support a team that's never been relegated like mine. So you just have to take the highs with the lows. You're nine years of age. You've got a whole life before you. Have a great birthday and a great life. Indeed. And Matt says this. Can I get a shout out for my new baby son, Fletcher? Uh, We're listening to the Two Mike's podcast at all times of the night. And there's a picture of Matt with his new baby son, Fletcher. Oh, how lovely. Who looks lovely, doesn't he? Well, Matt and Fletcher, what a great... uh, Fletch. You think he'd be known as Fletch? Fletch, probably. Uh, You know, uh, that's, uh, that's a father and son type picture, that. And I once won the father and son competition at Butlins Filey yeah. with my dad. You've never quite explained what you had to do to win that. You just have to pose. You just, have to you just stand there well, on you the... You stand up and you look yeah. like the best-looking father yeah, and son. Yeah, that's right, yeah. yeah. The competition must have been a bit rough. <laughs> well, yeah, I can you imagine? Yeah, I have to say, Was yeah. this before or after you won the cup for the boxing? Uh, it was... Well, my cup for the boxing was at uh, Poitelli, which is in no, Wales, yeah. and this one was at Filey. I see. I think the only reason we won is my dad was the only man in the whole of the Butlins uh, holiday camp. What? Who was actually there? No, <laughs> <laughs> no, who bothered bringing a suit and tie? Is that right? Yeah, so we turned up well, with a suit go. and tie, and, and, and I turned up in, like, you know, a sort of smart outfit. Looking reasonably smart. Yeah, yeah. and we won. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Now, this is from somebody whose name I'm not sure right. uh, about, but he's coming to us from Oregon. Oregon. Uh, and he says, Please wish my wife Cara a happy 19th anniversary. Oh. And he says, This Camberwell boy struck gold with her here in Oregon. Yes. Uh, and he's, uh, he's, he's Nosnil, I think his name is, but I'm not sure. Oh. Um, but uh, his wife's name is Cara. 19 years is not bad, is it? Well, well, 19 years is one short of 20. Yeah. So you're Correct. into you're into uh, a double decade. Uh, are you next one? So as you're in your 20th year now, I would say very good. Well done. And uh, just have a brilliant day. And then one final one uh, from David. He yes. says, can you please wish my wife Dawn Fox a belated birthday wish for the 15th of July? Mm. I've got her hooked on your show and she loves it. Uh, it was also our third wedding anniversary on the 15th of July as well. And this is her name is Dawn? Her name is Dawn. And how old is she? Um, uh, he doesn't say. He just says oh. it was their third wedding anniversary and it was her birthday on the 15th of July. Oh, OK. Well, listen, uh, combine the two and you've got a very happy week. So, yes. Dawn, well done. Hope you've had a uh, lovely uh, week or so of it and that life is a ball yes. with your paramour. No, OK. Mm. Now, finally, this is I'm going to have to ask you this question because a guy called yeah. John has posted a picture uh, and says, Porky says he's on the wagon. Can you explain this picture, please, taken in the last couple of days? Let me have a look. Now, I don't recognise that uh, as a place, but you may. Uh, that was taken... Do you know where that was? Where was that? Uh, Whitley Bay. That's what I thought. And uh, Do you know, I it thought was when that. I went for a when walk around. When you went around. for a walk and I went for a kip. That's right, yeah, before, before the, the show. show. And I took a walk around and... Uh, so John's being slightly disingenuous uh, here. Uh, rather disingenuous. He's saying, can you explain this picture taking the last couple of days? No, it wasn't taking the last couple of days. Whitley Bay was Whitley last Bay. September. It was indeed, yeah. But, uh, so you know, John, you can't fine. pull the wool over our eyes. No, you can't pull the wool over our eyes, but mm. I'm very happy to integrate with uh, the listeners. I don't mind the odd uh, sort of expansion on the truth. You know yes. what I mean? No, indeed. Now, a lot of people are away on holiday at the moment because this apparently is one of the 
most popular times to go away on holiday. Although, I have to yeah. tell you, yeah. I was down in Hastings at the seafront yesterday, um, sort of around about lunchtime. Yes. And it was absolutely mobbed. Was it? was it? quite a nice day for the And first... that was a Monday? Well, it was a uh, Tuesday, I a should Tuesday. say. A yeah, Tuesday, yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, But it was absolutely mobbed. There was loads and loads of people on the beach. There yeah. was loads of cars. There was yeah. loads and loads of what looked like sort of school trips from France. Yeah. And people walking around with rucksacks and all that. Yeah. Uh, but Watford, uh, who's away in Orlando, says, I'm tuning in from Orlando, chaps. I would love a mention. Mm. Porky sounds just as ridiculous out here as he does at home. Uh, yes. But uh, I presume he's on holiday out there. Bit of an inverted sort of, um, you know, uh, compliment, that, isn't it, really? It but really I'll, is. I'll take it in the spirit it was included, OK? Yes, absolutely right. Yes. Now, Brummy says, why can't the Postman Pork jingle be available for a ringtone? Funniest thing I've heard in ages. Now, we were supposed to be getting some ringtones. Yeah, we were. Night, we were. It's all been lost in the sort of sands of time. Yeah, they have, I'm afraid, I'll have yeah. to ch- But I'll, I'll make a note to try and uh, find out what's going on with that. We definitely will, and mm. uh, we will try and make sure that uh, we get it straight, OK? Yes, absolutely right. right. Good. Good. Now, uh, one thing I want to tell you is... Um, yes, I want to tell you. Now, I gave up reading Agony Ant-type things years ago, didn't Did you? you? Yeah. Well, yeah. I mean, I've never really been a massive Agony Ant follower. Well, no, neither me. Neither I, suppose, me. I suppose there was a time maybe in my teenage years when yeah. I used to read the things because yeah. I'd try and get some kind of uh, uh, education out of them. Yeah, right? that's right. Try just and to... figure out exactly what people were up to. Yeah, just occasionally and all that. However, mm. I, uh, I came across this one uh, just the other night. Yeah. Uh, while I was reading through what, my journal. this personal problem type things? Yeah, it was all these personal problem type things. Yeah. And uh, I've got it here, except that I can't find it. Um, and uh, it's very interesting mm. because it's basically uh, a plea from a young lady Yes, uh, that she wants to get back with her ex-boyfriend. Mm. But unfortunately, her ex-boyfriend has been banned from the house because he is a stand-up, fall-down drunk. Oh, yes. And her when father... When you say, but I wish you mean she lives with her parents. Right, I've got it here now, yeah. OK? It says, Dear Arthur, he's the agony aunt, OK? Because yeah. there are male agony aunts around these days. That's you know, a that... weird name for yeah, an agony it is, aunt, yeah. uncle, isn't well, it? Anyway, it is, yeah. My dad is furious. I'm getting back with my boyfriend. He used to have a drink problem. Mm. But he's been uh, to a long spell in rehab, and he's now stopped drinking. But my dad says, and you see, this rang a, a tone with me, yes. so I thought maybe you'd experience this mm. in your life or yeah. me in mine. Uh-huh. My dad says, once a drunk, always a drunk. Well, I've never been called a drunk <laughs> by anyone, though. I mean, have you? That's a bit harsh, isn't it? Well, I think there is eh? empirical evidence to suggest that it's true, actually. Because, yeah. yeah. I mean, how many people do you know uh, who claim to be going mm. off the wagon? That's right. Um, yeah. or, sorry, on the wagon. Mm. And then, you know, the next time you see them, they're back on it again. Yes, that's right. And a lot of people struggle with alcohol and yeah. they try and give it up, but they can't. They can't. Mm. So it goes on to say, my dad says that I will split the family if I get back with him as he has no intention of allowing an alcoholic to be part, part of our close family group. Oh, yeah. Well, that's a bit harsh, because, I mean, a, re- a recovering alcoholic is not an alcoholic, really, is he? Well, you're always an alcoholic, aren't you? That's the point. Yeah, yeah, but, I mean, a, a recovering alcoholic is not a drunk alcoholic. He's well, a sober as, alcoholic. Well, as long as he stays off the booze. Yeah, well, you see, this uh, The is problem what, is, I yeah. mean, there are some people who perhaps are not as understanding as you yes. in these matters. Yes. If they think that uh, their daughter is going out with, a, with an alcoholic, yes. they're not going to be too happy. I mean, I wouldn't be particularly happy if my no. daughter... He was going no. out with an alcohol. No, that's right, yeah. You know, so it goes, if every time he came to my place, <laughs> he right. sort of drained the liquor cabinet. That's, that's right, you know. and he was inebriated, yeah. yeah. So anyway, she goes on to say, uh, my parents uh, both told me the first time round that my boyfriend was an alcoholic. Right. But I never believed them. Uh, I never saw the signs. Right. She never saw the signs? Never saw the signs, no. Well, what were the signs? <laughs> I know. <laughs> the fact that every time he came around to pick her up, you know, he fell over the doorstep yeah, or something like right. that. Or he was always, uh, yeah. you know, sort of strangely uh, scented, uh, that's which right. is one yeah. thing yeah. they do, isn't it? So she goes on to say, I'm 23 and my boyfriend is 27. Right. I asked my boyfriend, are you an alcoholic? Yes. And he said no. Well, that's all right then. And he said that <laughs> he now accepts that he may have been an alcoholic, right. but he did not realise the signs himself. <laughs> <laughs> this sounds ridiculous. Yeah, yeah, that's right. Yeah. Uh, what's the advice anyway? Yeah, well, I'm going to get to that. What's in a Arthur have to say? He didn't realise uh, the signs himself. Right. Until one day, yeah. he staggered into a rehab assessment centre, oh, yeah. who then told him he had all the chronic. Um, you know, uh, symptoms mm. of alcoholism. Yes. And how did he not pick any of this up? I don't know. Mm. Anyway, it says, my dad has now become obsessed and I'm starting to get annoyed right. that he's trying to run my life. OK. He just won't understand mm. that I have deep feelings for this man. I love him yeah. and I want to give him a chance. Oh, dear. Well, you see, that's any parent's well, nightmare. I mean, so Arthur says what then? Because, I mean, so, this is doomed yeah, to failure, yeah, I'm afraid. Absolutely. So Arthur says, mm. you are an adult... 
but your dad is clearly clearly worried for you. Still trying to bully you isn't the way to get you to rethink. Yes. Well, I don't think the dad's bullying her. I think the dad's well, opening her eyes. The problem is, if she's living in her parents' home, yes. you know, then there's not a lot you can really say to the guy. Because yeah. if he is actually you know, supporting you, yeah. it's really up to him as to who lives there with you. Yeah. Hey, listen, what comes next? Arthur now sort of insinuates that actually her dad's probably an alcoholic as well. Oh, my God. He says, uh, has your dad reason to be sensitive to mm. alcohol issues? Right. Tell him you know he is worried, but you love your boyfriend and are going to give him another chance. Right. So you hope he will respect your choice. But be firm with your boyfriend and say a relapse will cost him the relationship. That's very sensible advice, I It's would say. bum advice, that. No, that's good bum advice. Well, Arthur make should sure have said that, it. Make sure the guy stops drinking. No. Right, give himself, gives himself no. a second chance. No. Gives the relationship a second chance, otherwise it's all over. Arthur should have said, don't touch this man with a barge pole. Drunks are notoriously unreliable. Uh-huh. They're liars, right. they're thieves, they're So you don't want to give him a second chance. No. They'll steal your money to go and buy booze. They'll end up I'm in a gutter got, again. I'm amazed you got that attitude. No, no, no. I wouldn't give this man hope in hell. If she was my daughter, mm. I'd lock her in a bedroom until this guy got the idea I that see. he wasn't welcome. And then I'd report him to some, like, psychiatric hospital and get him locked up. Well, uh, locking people up for drunkenness is yeah. not really something I'd expect yeah. you to say. Yeah. Harry Kane nearly scored a goal there, nearly scored an equaliser, but yeah, it didn't right. happen. He got a corner out of it instead. Yeah. Uh, the Tottenham game's still on, of course. Uh, 65 minutes gone, 1-0 to Roma. Uh, it's being played in New Jersey at the Red Bull Stadium. This is yes. Talk Sport. Up the G-fork, sipping on juice and gin. Just me and a friend Feeling kind of groovy Working on a movie Yeah, right But we did nothing Absolutely fuck kids that day And I'll say What the hell am I Doing drinking in L.A. At 26 This is Talk Sport We are of the two mics We've got loads going on Of course uh, you know what to do. You can tweet us at the two mics, at Mike Perrier, at IROMG. Ask Porky coming up in the next hour. We've got an awful lot of uh, things going on. Sure. Uh, we've got an awful lot of very good questions. It's now 2 0, by the way, yep. to Roma, uh, who have just scored a second uh, over in uh, the uh, Red Bull Stadium in Haddison, New Jersey. Mm. A bit of a blunder by the uh, by the top defence there, but never mind. Mm. Let's talk to Sandro Minetti, our man in Hollywood. He's yes. got his finger on the pulse of all the showbiz stories going on. And he's just come back, by the way, from San Diego uh, from a comic convention. Yeah, uh, Sandro, a very, very good morning to you. Star-spangled salutations from the United <laughs> States. The event you're talking of is Comic-Con, which to me eclipses the Cannes Film Festival, the Oscars, all of it. Hmm. Um, it's such an important showbiz gathering, gathering of the clans of the nerds who are the real influencers these days, let's face it, and all the big upcoming movies and TV shows were showcased there. I was in geek heaven. Well, mm. I bet you were. And there was a few sort of um, Brits there along the way as well. It wasn't just uh, stuffed with celebrities from the US of A, right? That's certainly true. And uh, one of the foremost shows was, of course, uh, Doctor Who. Mm. And uh, Peter Capaldi was basically on his farewell tour. Uh, it's very moving that uh, he got a standing ovation at his last public appearance in America as Doctor Who from his adoring public before he makes way to Jodie Whittaker, of course. So, um, yeah, uh, Brits very much at the forefront. There was uh, Tom Hiddleston, uh, who is, uh, you know, back playing uh, Loki again in the new Thor film. And uh, more Brits than you could shake a stick at. We dominate showbiz. We dominate uh, Comic-Con. Great occasion. Um, some more Brits, um, Jason Isaacs and James Frain. They're the stars of the new Star Trek TV series, Star Trek Discovery. So even in the 23rd century, Brits will still uh, be at the forefront. That's good to see. Now, Sandra, I want to talk to you in a minute about Doctor Who stealing your Cabaret's flake. Uh, horrendous cr- yes. cr- crime, even by a time lord. But mostly, <laughs> I think we should concentrate on the fact that you have been where the news has broken that uh, Daniel Craig will be playing James Bond for a fifth time. This is such big news over in this country. It's on the front of the Times, the Thunderer, the English version, but also seems to have been confirmed uh, tonight also by the New York Times. And this is despite the fact that he told London Time Out after making Spectre, I would rather slash my wrist yeah. uh, than play James Bond again. And if I was ever to do it, it would only ever be for the money. Hmm. Um, well, well, I guess there's your answer then. Clearly, 
to come his way. Mm. Um, but uh, it, you can't argue with the economics of it. I mean, the uh, the James Bond films are uh, more financially successful uh, than they've ever been yeah. under Daniel Craig. So uh, it's an economic decision. They could have gone creative and, uh, and and picked somebody else for the role or stayed with the tried and tested. And that appears to be the, uh, the way they've gone. So mm. uh, I think they've parked an Aston Martin full of cash around at Daniel Craig's house. And, um, you know... Uh, uh, you know, in his defence, you know, mm. when you talk to the likes of me for days on end, you can say stupid stuff in, the, in interviews. <laughs> yeah. And uh, that's a quote that uh, hopefully won't come back to haunt him. Well, mm. that's true as well. But also, I mean, it's not a bad negotiation technique, is it, to make out like, you know, oh, I don't want to be typecast, but it's basically the best role he's ever had in any film that will ever be made. And he probably won't be able to, to go away and make a better film than some of the James Bond stuff that he's been anyway. I mean, he's not exactly Lawrence Olivia, you know, is he? It's what I do on dates. You know, I, I act like I'm, I'm just not interested, and, and that's probably why I'm still single. Uh, well, mm. you may well be able to save yourself a lot of money that way as well. What, what about the, uh, the, the <laughs> to, to, to put the two together, the Time Lord and James Bond? I mean, there was an awful lot of uh, hoo-ha here, ridiculously, I would say, uh, when it was declared that the new Doctor Who was going to be a woman. Mm. Um, people got very worked up about it, all, all, all told. And I'm assuming that it's not going to be long before the next James Bond is a woman. Well, I mean, this weekend sees the opening of Atomic Blonde starring Charlize Theron, which is yeah. very cleverly being marketed as the first female James Bond is already here. Mm. It says Jane Bond on all the promotional posters. So, uh, yeah, sort of why not? Charlize Theron is kicking ass and taking names uh, in James Bond style, you know, just, just uh, doing it all in a miniskirt and a, and a killer pair of heels. Absolutely. So, uh, yeah, I, I think the female James Bond is all, already here. And, uh, yeah, I mean, it, it, it's uh, why not? I mean, Doctor Who's uh, got, their, got their first. You know, as I said before, with the casting of Daniel Craig, everything in Hollywood comes down to money. Wonder Woman is the biggest hit of the summer, but yeah. there was no female superhero movie, you know, out since 2005 when we had Elektra with, with Jennifer Garner, Catwoman the year before in 2004. It was thought by Hollywood that female-led action pictures did not make money. Mm. Well, Wonder Woman has sort of proved them wrong. Yeah. And if Jodie Whittaker's Doctor Who is a, is a huge hit on the small screen and, uh, you know, expands the female fan base for, uh, for that show, then, yeah, I would not be surprised that when Daniel Craig you know, either slashes his wrists or quits the role, then, uh, you know, we will have a, a, a woman 007. Why not? Well, I think Tom Hardy's still the favourite to take that one over. But anyway, Sandra, tell us about uh, Doctor Who stealing your cabaret's flake. A terrible crime. So um, I had the uh, wonderful task of uh, doing, like, a day full of interviews on, on Sunday, and uh, they were stacked up, stars back-to-back, and so I didn't have time. I didn't have time to, to eat my lunch. But I thought when I finished after my final interview, Peter Capaldi, I will eat the Cadbury flake that I put on the on the, on the and brought for lunch. So uh, Capaldi, you know, comes in, says hello, and has that celebrity attitude of you know when there is chocolate on the table, mm. automatically assumes it's for him, mm. and starts eating my Cadbury flake while conducting the interview. Did you not think so, you should have intervened? Do you know, you should have said, "Hey, listen, Capaldi." You know, you may uh, have given up Doctor Who, but you're not uh, you're not nicking my Cadbury's flake on the back of it. Yeah, I just wanted him to like go back in time and then not take the flake. Exactly. Um, <laughs> but, you know, we have so little time for the interview. I'm there to, to get some quotes. So, uh, well, you know, over a discussion of Doctor Who stole my chocolate. Mm -hmm. um, but um, you know, instead he was talking about you know how sad he was to leave the role and his legacy and all all the rest of it. But now. You know, we've ended up talking about him stealing my flake. So, uh, by the way, crumbliest, flakiest chocolate in the in the world, that mm. was written by Salman Rushdie, you know, back when he was a copywriter for Cadbury's. I didn't know that. No, I did I not know that. Really? But I also didn't know that you could get Cadbury's flakes over in the US of A, in places as diverse as San Diego. So there we are. Uh, now, you were saying that you're still remaining single after all these crunchies as well. Crunchy, you yeah. said you still remain yeah. single after all this time. Well, apparently Christy Brinkley uh, doesn't know where to go to meet a nice man. <laughs> so what I would do if I were you is go and hang around somewhere where Christy Brinkley is. 
Well, absolutely. I mean, even though she is 20 years older than me, I look 10 years older than her. Um, Christy Brinkley um, first came to fame as uh, Uptown Girl in her ex-husband Billy Joel's uh, video. Uptown uh, Girl! Thank you for that. That's right. She's been living in an uptown world, um, and and she has for a while. She has expensive taste, but, uh, yeah, she looks stunning at 63, but despite that, she can't find a man. It's been almost a year since she split up with uh, her last boyfriend, John Cougar Mellencamp. I don't know if you want to sing one of his, his hits, but uh, yeah. anyway. You know any of his and, stuff? Uh, oh, he... ain't it America? Something to see. Ain't, ain't, it America? ain't that America? Yeah, I think it ain't was that America? Yeah. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> but yeah, she doesn't know where you find all the all all the nice men. Mm. Um, even looking as stunning as as she does, she just can't get a, a, a fella. Right. I mean, uh, what are the chances for the rest of us if someone as gorgeous as her can't pull? Yeah. Uh, well, indeed. I mean, you just have to give her a bit of advice and tell her to go to uh, somewhere mm. in uh, Las Vegas or something yeah, like that. that. Uh, by the way, that uh, video, Sandro, you know, Uptown Girl in that yeah. garage in New York, that was made just around the corner from where I lived in New York on 77th and 1st. And, you know, they're bringing in all the arc lights and, you know, all the, all the big production vans. So it was fantastic to see that being made. Um, and and the, you know the old English car that she stepped out of it brilliant one of the great one of the great music videos of all time yeah stands the test of time uh, yeah. made the same year as Thriller and every every That's bit right. as much uh, a yeah. classic and talking of classics Christie still looks fantastic so. Uh, yeah. Uh, if, you, if you're single and you're listening, you know, maybe contact her on Twitter and offer you offer your romantic service. Yeah, maybe, maybe she could maybe she get out and have a look at OJ Simpson now that he's going to be getting out uh, mm. on parole. Yeah, that's right. Yeah, yeah. I mean, there's been lots of discussion about uh, OJ Simpson. You know, how long will it be before he's on Strictly Come Dancing, the American equivalent, <laughs> or maybe you know the new the, the new Bachelor? It's shocking, uh, isn't it? it? Really is. Yeah. Because I mean, I mean, we 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 joke about it, but you know, there is money to be made. You look mm. at the fact that. The People versus O.J. Simpson, one of the biggest hit TV shows in the world last year. The documentary about O.J. won the Oscar. There's big money and big interest still in the O.J. business. Mm. But no one wants to publish his book. Um, the O.J. prison diaries, uh, you know, have been quietly sort of shopped around the yep. major publishers. Yep. And no one's biting because they figure it'll be so bad for their brand if they're seen to pay money to O.J. Simpson mm. that there'll be a sort of negative negative backlash against their, uh, their other clients and other, other properties. So uh, OJ's coming out, um, but his chances of, uh, of, of making money are, uh, you know, somewhat restricted. So is he finally that toxic uh, that nobody will touch him, do you think? I mean, will he just have to shuffle off? And, and I mean, I was, I was hearing that he gets quite a, st- a, st- a sturdy pension from the NFL, which he would get no matter whether he was guilty or not. And, um, you know, but he's, he's going to have to just keep himself out of the public eye now, isn't he? He's got to keep out of Hollywood as well. I mean, he's moving to Florida, not because he particularly likes it, but just under the laws of the United States. Um, you know, the property he owns there, the pension he collects there, he doesn't have to give any of it to uh, Ron Goldman's family. Um, there was a civil uh, case judgment uh, against him. He still hasn't paid the many millions he has to pay. So uh, any money that he does get from, you know, his reality show or, or a book, you know, has to go to the parents of the murder victim, because whereas he was found uh, innocent in criminal court, uh, he was found liable uh, in civil court uh, later and lost that case against the Goldman. So uh, he still owes them approximately $33 million. Mm -hmm. Um, And so, uh, yes, it's um, no one uh, wants to pay him um, some money if it's not going to go to the Goldman. And that's the uh, uh, that's the dilemma uh, ahead. Mm -hmm. And and finally, just talking of uh, Florida, what's the story with the Venus Williams uh, case? What's happening there? Well, yes, anyone who sort of followed uh, Wimbledon uh, saw how uh, Venus sort of broke down in the press room over the uh, the tragedy mm. of how she was involved in a fatal traffic accident, allegedly going through a red light and colliding um, with uh, Jerome Barson, 78 years old, who, who died. And even though the uh, police didn't bring any criminal charges there, the family uh, of Mr. Barson is suing Venus Williams, and she is striking back in court um, you know, her lawyers putting the blame largely on the on the victim, mm. uh, pointing out that uh, he wasn't wearing a seatbelt and uh, claiming that his vehicle wasn't in an adequate state of, of repair. And, uh, you know, uh, a, a fatality could have been avoided. So mm. uh, 
Venus, just as she was tough on the tennis court, is even tougher in the courtroom, it would appear. A formidable uh, opponent um, in, in justice as well as um, in sport. Absolutely. And just to get one thing absolutely straight here, uh, Sandra, while we've got you on live from the United States, Senator John McCain, standing ovation in the Senate, uh, broke his recuperation from brain cancer surgery to cast a crucial vote on Obamacare, but made the outrageous statement that most of the world's current problems are the fault of bombastic loudmouths on the radio. Who can he be referring to? Well, that's what I want to know. I want to know. We've had a few problems over the weekend. (laughs) Don't upset John McCain as well, have you? No. I mean, has he heard of it? I didn't realise. I didn't realise that, you know, the word of the two mics had reached the Senate of the United States of America... Your fame is legendary. He says Thank politicians God. everywhere should listen to the voters and not listen to the, uh, to the blowhards <laughs> on, the, on the radio. Yeah. Anyone with a microphone suddenly has an opinion. And, uh, and he says they should deal in the real world, not the world of radio. How dare he? Yeah. I know. I used to this like Mr great. McCain. It's great, isn't it, these guys mm. that work in the political yeah. sphere. And guess where they go when they lose their seats and mm. they try and make some money? That's right. Oh, look, they go in the broadcasting studio, yeah. on the radio and on the TV. Yeah. We do wish him all the best, though, with we his uh, recovery. Uh, and we hope that uh, he is as he's at his bombastic best very soon. But we will disagree with him about that because uh, we're not uh, particularly bombastic and we are talking an awful lot of sense an awful lot of the time. Indeed. We've got lots more going on, though. Ask Paul coming up shortly this is talk sport the two mics simulcast across the uk on talk sport and talk radio We are uh, the two mics, of course. Uh, the Porky Quiz will be coming up at the end of the week. Uh, we haven't decided what that's going to be on yet, I don't think, have we? Uh, but uh, ask yeah. Porky's coming up a little bit later. We'll put Porky Vision tomorrow. Yeah. Uh, but we're playing the Rolling Stones there. Why? Well, it wasn't the Rolling Stones, was it? You know what that was? That was the uh, Band-Aid uh, record, oh, was wasn't that it? The one Mick Jagger with and David, David Bowie. Bowie. Oh, OK. David Bowie's not yeah. here anymore, of course. No, he's God not. rest his soul. No, indeed. But Mick Jagger is, and he's 74 today. Yes. So he's doing incredibly well, isn't he, eh? Yeah. Him and McCartney, I mean, they've been legends for so long. Yeah. Yesterday was the 54th anniversary of the release of With the Beatles. 54? Yeah. Ooh, blimey. Yeah, exactly. That's a long time ago. I know, it? And, and I saw a picture of the cover of it, you know, with all the individual little uh, um, passport-sized photographs oh, yeah. of the four Beatles, mm. you know. Yes. And to think that was 54 years ago. So Paul McCartney must have been 22 when that was I made. suppose so. And they were at the height of their world fame. Yes. It's amazing, isn't it? It really is. But and there's a great piece of video actually. I don't know if you've ever seen it of yeah. um, Jagger and, and and David Bowie doing that song. Oh yeah, but without the backing music. There's a, just a video of them and they're sort of dancing about. Uh, and they're dancing in these ruins and then uh, swirling round uh, poles. Yeah, and all they that are. Kind of what stuff. I'm saying yeah. is that the audio is completely different yeah. because rather than hearing the actual song, yeah. you're just hearing sort of occasional little th- of them mouthing words or saying things. And oh, it's, I see. It's almost completely silent. Do you oh, remember? Tottenham have scored, by the way. Tottenham scored. Yeah, so it's 2 1 now to right. Roma. Right, 2 1 to Roma, yeah. Mm. Do you remember the scramble? colour of the clothes Mick Jagger had on that day? Um, I, I was going to say red and blue, but I'm not no. sure. No. Lime green trousers yeah. and a dark blue shirt. Really? Yeah, quite unusual. It is quite unusual. And I don't think I've Bowie, ever owned anything David lime blue. Bowie had lime a, green. had a trench coat He had on. a long coat on, long I seem to remember coat. that. That's right. Yeah. 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 Now, we're talking about uh, a showbiz there with, uh, with yes. our good friend Sandra Monetti. Yes. Uh, talking about various movies and things. I actually went to the cinema. Uh, on Monday, oh, and I you? went to see the War of the Planet of the Apes. Oh right, which we had spoken to your uh, your good mate uh, from the Mail, uh, Brian right. Viner, about Brian a little Viner. while ago. Yeah, and he said it was a really great film. Now I have to say, mm. I didn't think it was a really great film, and I was slightly disappointed uh, with it. I mean, there was did some you take in- both your boys. With I you? did. There was some great. Now, what did they think? Uh, they, I think they thought it was okay. It was okay. I mean, they oh, weren't see, waxing yeah. lyrical about it. You know, yeah, it was yeah. quite slow at the beginning. I think the problem with the Planet because mm. the first couple of Planet of the Apes films I thought were really good. Because what they did was they they elevated the ape suddenly to, you know, from not being in charge to being in charge. And they were suddenly now sort of, you know, slightly more menacing and slightly more difficult and slightly more nasty. But this one, this one, this one, you know, was supposed to have a great message. Mm. In fact, the apes were supposed to represent uh, 
black men. Oh, really? And the whole idea was levelling up the world um, balance of power between yeah. white population uh-huh. and black population. Well, I didn't get that it, message it, at well, all. That, I, I read this deep scientific piece about what it was all supposed to be right. about in, I think it was Spectator magazine, really? which said there was a very deep meaning to this film and all this kind of stuff. Yeah, uh, I don't think that's anything to do with the actual film. I well, think that's well, some that's, maniac that's what, that's of the what, spectator kind of yeah, trying, to, that's what trying, to imp- trying to impose that on whatever it is. Yeah, because yeah. one of the things that happens, and mm. I don't really want to give too much away, yeah. uh, but is, is that um, is that the, uh, the, the the last remaining sort of uh, humans yeah. who are fighting the apes because yes. they're trying to stop the apes from taking over mm, mm. are actually um, you know running the risk of getting an illness, which basically means they can't speak. Right, and so what that does is it hurls them back into the land of what they think the apes came from. Oh, I see. Because the apes couldn't speak right. before they before they started to speak. Yeah, I see, yeah. See what I mean? So yeah. I don't think it was anything to do yeah. with uh, race or, or colour of skin yeah. or anything like that. Yeah. But I just thought it was all a bit slow and somehow mm. with the apes being kind of the nicer version of the humans, yeah. it doesn't work so well. Right. It works and, a lot better with the apes taking everybody hostage and chucking them in prisons and stuff. You and know? if you go to a, see a film which is called The War of Anything, you expect yeah. to see a war. You well, there was to see a, a big there was, battles. There was some battles, but yeah. I mean, it just, I, I just wasn't as impressed as I was really looking forward to seeing it because yes. I thought this is the one film that I want to see. My 10 year old wanted to go and see Dunkirk, right? And I said, Did Well, he? I don't know, yeah, well, he, that's amazing, yeah. Well, he really likes the idea of Dunkirk and he's mm. been doing a, a, a project on the Second World War, I see, yeah. So I think that's probably what's made it interesting. Well, that for Dunkirk me. film, I have to say, people are saying that's brilliant. Well, it's got some such mixed reviews. I've read some reviews, might have to get uh, Mr. Viner on oh, yeah. to give us the verdict on uh-huh. this. But uh, one set of reviews says it's nothing but noise. Right. I mean, just literally bang, boom, boom. Right. Yeah, because there's quite a, quite lots lots of yeah. pieces of it without any dialogue. Yeah, right? that's right. Yeah, My yeah. It's just action. Another one says no, it's brilliantly done. Mm. But all of the uh, after reviews, if you see what I mean. Um, claim that the guy who was really the hero of the whole thing never even got a mention. Yes. Because uh, Kenneth Branagh um, uh, plays Commander Bolton. Right. Right. Um, and it says that uh, Commander Bolton, the character in this film, was yeah. not the real hero. I see. The, le- the real hero was a man called James Campbell Clouston, who was the man who masterminded the yeah. whole thing. Right. And... and uh, said in some famous words, you know, just before they had to log- organise it, oh, what you got on tomorrow, James? Mm. He said, not a lot. <laughs> just got to rescue the whole of the British the army whole, yeah. from the beaches of France. From the, from the Norway yeah. beaches, yeah. yeah. By the way, Tottenham just got another goal. It's now 2-2. Yeah. So it's very, very, very exciting over there in New Jersey. Well, John Hearn's seen the film, by the way. Has he? Which Dunkirk. one? Dunkirk. Oh, well, I think we should get a review from John. Should we get a review from John? In the next hour, definitely. In the next hour? Definitely. Okay. We'll see definitely. if he can spare some time. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, I don't know whether he's got anything on. Talking of uh, military matters, how yes. about this from Sam? And yes. I don't think this is an Ask Porky. Yeah. Uh, so I think it's a bit more something you could get into now. Yeah. Listening from South Korean shipyard working on the yeah. new Royal Fleet Auxiliary Tankers. Yes. Says Sam. Just wonder what Porky thinks about RFA ships being built outside of the UK. These will be resupplying the new aircraft carriers, by the way. Mm. Well, you know, there's this a constant battle goes on about uh, price. If we if we don't go to where it's cheapest to buy the ships, we're then accused of overspending on the defence budget. You know what this I mean? This game's really taking off. It's, it's really now gold off. by Roma. Yeah. Yeah, go, go, go by Roma. I'll tell you what, yeah. Tottenham's defence at the moment is absolutely horrendous. It looks horrendous. That is absolutely horrendous. Looks horrendous, I have to say. Our Tottenham's forty producer's already crying foul. Yeah, yeah. He's wrong. Yeah, was That's it now? 4-2. 3-2. 3-2. 3-2. 3-2. You sure? Sure it's not 4-2? No, it's 3-2. 3-2. Trust me. OK. Anyway, um, you were saying about the Royal Fleet Auxiliary. Yeah, and, you know, and then you say, well, should we build in this country? I'm amazed at the amount of shipbuilding that's going on because we've just started building eight Type 26s, which yeah. are the most advanced warships yes. in the world. What did they name the first one, by the way? Because we were doing a show last week. Do you remember? And they yes. were named them. Glasgow. Glasgow. HMS Glasgow. OK. Is yeah. it, I'm surprised there isn't one of those already. Uh, well, there probably has been in the mm. past because they bring names back. Yeah. Another one called HMS Duncan okay. is on manoeuvres out in uh, Oman. Right. Right, because yeah. they're trying to help with the This is one of the new ones. As well, or one no, of the that's one of the T twenty fours actually. Uh, okay. One of the six T twenty fours, which okay. is said not to work in hot weather. Mm. So I think they've taken it out there to make sure it does. Okay. Um, however, um, the main problem at sea at the moment mm. is that um, the it's it's rather a complicated and political story. Yes. But basically, it's said that the situation now in which thousands, tens of thousands of refugees are fleeing from North Africa yeah. to Europe and to heading mostly for Italy. In Europe, yeah. Is is a, a conspiracy between mm. the rescue forces, i.e., some members of the Italian Navy, believe yeah. it or not, right. who know 
that the ships are sent out from North Africa with just enough fuel to get them halfway, yeah. and then the Italian then Navy has to rescue them. Well, this is and a big argument about whether they should be rescued. Exactly, whether they should be rescued or not. If you do rescue them, then obviously that's going to encourage more people to come. That's right. Risking their lives that's right. to be rescued. And now strategists are saying this is madness, mm. uh, that actually what's happening is that there's a migrant taxi service now all the way from yeah. Libya to Italy with a conspiracy of A, the relief agencies and B, the Italian government. Yeah. Because what else but can you, you can't, do? But yeah, exactly. You can't. I mean, no civilised yeah. nation could leave no. a ship full of men, women and children. No, you can't. In many cases, just no. to, 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 to drown in the middle of the Mediterranean Sea. Maybe all these fires in the Mediterranean yeah. will have an effect as well. Well, maybe it will. But I think what you've got to do is you've got to get it at source. Mm. So the Italians, I'm afraid, have got to go to the countries where it's happening, like Libya. Right. And there's a very strong connection between Italy and Libya. I mean, uh, uh, Italy used to be a colonial power yeah. in North Africa. Well, this is why people have always said, yeah. have they not? Um, yeah. Um, or people who are a little bit more, shall we mm. say, sort of uh, liberal-minded, yeah. that you've got to go and, and, and make these countries livable in in order for people not to want That's to right. leave them. That's right. But it hasn't worked very well either. No, it hasn't worked. But the, the Italians have got to go and say, stop putting these poor people into boats and shoving out the yeah, Mediterranean. Yeah, but a lot of people are doing it. They're criminals. They're not going to, of course they're, they're not, criminals, they're, yeah. They're, they're not going to go, oh, all right. No, then. but they've got to say to the Libyan government, if there is a Libyan government, because David Cameron smashed up Libya and yeah. the government dissipated uh-huh. and disappeared, you know, get tough with the criminals. Mm. All right. A couple of quick corrections for you. Marty says, Jagger had a green shirt and blue trousers, Porky. Uh, well, that's the other, other way, way around, around then. That's all right. <laughs> that's all right. That was and very apparently, close. Mark says, it was actually a hard day's night, not with the Beatles. It was. Yes, you're right. Thank you. It was. So, Apart night. from those Thank two uh, small errors, That's everything's right. absolutely going well. That's right. This is Talk Sport. Yeah. This is Talk Sport. We are the two mics. And uh, let me read you this out from Phil, uh, who sent us one yeah. earlier, who said, uh, Love listening to the two mics. I'm on my drive from Lake Placid, New York, to Orlando, Florida. Wow. Just that's... a 20 hour drive. I was about to say, that's Can you some imagine? drive. Uh, and this morning he started at 5 a.m. Uh, and he's in North Carolina right now. North uh, Carolina. He says he's almost reached South Carolina. Uh, which one is Charlotte in? Charlotte is South Carolina, I, I think. I think it is South Carolina. Yeah. I played golf there once. Did you? Yeah. Okay. Well, and near it's... Hilton Head. Uh, Hilton Head yeah, Island, been, yeah. which would is it, sort of in the north of South that, Carolina, that, if you know what I mean. The, yeah, I do, yeah. The place with the red and white light, lighthouse. That's right. They have, You know, they have an absolutely different menu down there. It's all yeah. Cajun. Yes. And, uh, a lot of fish, isn't it? Yeah, that's right. And But it's, but it's like... Um, Broiled fish, you yeah. know, it's like burnt fish, yeah. you know what I mean? It's, it's very cagey, but it's fantastic charm, South Carolina, you know, the like the old sort of uh, Civil War type stuff. Charleston and all that. And yeah, all that. Charleston and all yeah. that kind of stuff, yeah. I think, now, I think Charlotte might be North Carolina, actually. I think it is, yeah, mm. I think it is. Now then, I was going to, not much difference really between North and South Carolina, to be honest. I find but, enough, uh, I used to go down to a place called Kiri Beach. Um, oh yeah, with my ex-wife's family, who always used to get a condominium down there, and it was yeah. right at the very sort of southeastern tip yes. of North Carolina, and you could take a ferry across this kind of um, almost estuary type right. place and go to South Carolina. Okay, and you're right; it's absolutely very little yeah. difference. Uh, absolutely. Mm. Now then, there's one here from Lyle. He yeah. says, "Can I please get a special shout out to my beautiful wife, Darice? Yes, who's in hospital. No oh, dear, and could do with a smile. Uh huh. So the answer to that is yes, you can, Lyle. And he comes from Liverpool because his uh, handle is Liverpool Lyle. Right. So I do hope your uh, Lovely wife, Darius, gets better soon. Let's hope so. And if we, the two mice, can help uh, boost her on her way, yeah. then we're delighted to be able to do so. Mm, yes. Absolutely. Now, David, yes. the guy who sent you that butter knife, mm. um, by, by the way, has also tweeted in, uh, thanks for opening the letter opener. Feel free to use it as a butter toast or for skinning beef. Skinning beef, yeah. Is it sharp enough for that, do you think? Uh, well, yeah, I think so. Really? Because, uh, it, be it would, careful you don't cut yourself. It would be sharp enough for skinning chicken because chicken skin comes off very uh, easily it off does. the breast. As long as it's not one of those chlorinated chickens that are coming in from America. America. Well, reading about these. What a load of rubbish. That's just the old uh, Remainers mean? saying, oh, you can't import this American chicken. It's not, uh, it's not got well, what do you EU mean? regulations. Well, it's been, chlor- it's been washed in chlorine, hasn't it? Yeah, which is fine. Well, it's oh, fine, well, it's fine for, to eat, is it? Well, it's fine for 260 million Americans. Really? So it's going to be fine for us. So, I'm, have you ever, so had, have so you ever had chicken food poisoning in America? Chicken food poisoning in America? No, I don't no, think I have. No, neither have I. But what so I can't tell you, wrong with it. But what I can tell you about mm. food in America is yeah. that most of it does not taste anything like as good as the food in this country because it's so badly affected by chemicals. I don't agree. It is so mass produced. Well, anyone who knows anything about food will tell you that when you go to America, yeah. you buy the ham, mm. you buy the cheese, mm. you buy the chicken, mm. uh, you buy any number of different types of meat. 
There is absolutely no comparison to the taste in this country. The best, the best steaks I've ever had have been in America. Well, you Certainly haven't had steaks York. here, have you? Certainly in Palm, Palm the Steaks are very good in very yeah. expensive steak exactly. restaurants. I'm exactly. talking about the mass-produced food, well, which you buy in supermarkets. I wouldn't worry you about go, it. Well, I would worry about it because mm. I worry about what I eat. Yeah, OK. Well, I know you don't worry about yeah, what you eat. Okay. You stick any old rubbish down right, your throat. Well, you're not going to be in America until September, so don't worry about it till then. OK. Now then, uh, how, how about I... China, by the way? I meant to ask you about this China crisis going on. What about Isn't it? there some kind of football crisis in China? Oh, uh, the fact that half... No, every club except one now has renaded on its wage bill. Yeah, they're all running out of so money, huge, aren't they? Yeah, and they couldn't pay. So the second Chinese sort of revolution of football yeah, yeah. has gone the way of the first. Collapso. Looks like uh, Now then, how many long have I been telling you that I have got exactly the right domestic makeup, and how long have you mocked me and said, oh, you know... What do you mean, the right domestic makeup? No, you know, you've got a cleaner, you've got a housekeeper, what's wrong with you? Well, no, I've never said that. What I've said is, is that mm. you've got somebody who you get mm. to do all your dog's body type work, uh, who is not really a housekeeper, he's kind of a, a sort of superannuated no, cleaner. it's my housekeeper. Well, and anyway, I've got it right for you, so let me read you this. All right. The secret of happiness mm. may be as simple as employing a cleaner, oh, yeah. a study has found. OK. Paying someone to do tasks you dislike, such as cleaning, shopping or weeding, creates greater life satisfaction than doing it yourself. The study uh, says that having too little time to do the things you need to do to maintain your life is a new form of poverty. Oh, yeah. And it's nothing to do with financial poverty. Uh-huh. The solution is to spend money on domestic assistance, as this will reduce the stresses of being time poor in a way that buying a fancy car, an expensive meal in a restaurant or a new sofa will not. Right. So how about that? Well, it depends on who's done the study. Well, who's I, done it? Uh, who's done it? Yeah. These Where is it coming from? Harvard Business School. Harvard Business now, School. Now, they're pretty good. Well, they're, they're pretty good. They're pretty good at many things. They're I'm pretty sure bright they're very, guys. I'm sure they're very good at hiring many, many people to do things for them in their homes as well. Not everybody can afford it is the problem. Ashley Williams, mm-hmm. professor at Harvard Business School, said people who hire a house cleaner or pay the kid next door yeah. to mow the lawn might feel they're being lazy. But our results suggest... Buying time has similar benefits for happiness as having more money. Well, that depends what you do Gives with it, Gives you suppose, mental it? calmness. Doesn't that depend what you do with the time? Well, I mean, I... if all you do with the time is go down to the pub and get completely bladderated, yeah, well, that's... then that's not necessarily good for you. But that's relaxation? Well, it's relaxation, but it's not good for you. So, I mean, if, for example, you were going to do something else with your time, mm. which was going to be more, I don't know, worthwhile... Maybe go and do some volunteering or something, or go and yeah. spend some time with some people that need a bit of cheering up. Yes. Or, you know, maybe doing a bit of travelling. Yes. But if all you're going to do is bring in somebody to iron mm. your shirts mm. and clean your house yeah. while you go out on the Raz, yes. then that may not be quite as beneficial as the guy from Harvard has in mind. I think it is. A strange survey, this. It mm. says um, the researchers questioned more than 6,000 people in the United States, uh-huh. Canada, Denmark, yeah. and the Netherlands. Right. And they asked how much, if anything, they spent each month to buy themselves free time. They also rated their life satisfaction and answered questions about feeling of time stress. Yes. Now, this is the strange bit about it. Mm. The study encompassed representative working people in the first three countries. Right. That's the US, Canada and Denmark. Mm. And then for some strange reason... 850 millionaires in the Netherlands. 850 millionaires? Yeah. I didn't know that. I was going to say, I didn't know the Netherlands. I mean, all of that, 850 no. millionaires. Well, I mean, it's a, it's, it's a small country, isn't it? Yeah. And I suppose 850 is not that many. But, I mean, it's, it sounds like a lot for a country like Holland, somehow. It says here, despite enviable wealth, almost half of the Dutch sample of millionaires reported spending no money on outsourcing their dislike tasks. Really? Analysing the results further, the authors found that people who spent more money on time-saving purchases felt much less stress. It's a bit of an odd survey, this. I don't know where these 850 Dutch millionaires have come from. Yeah, I don't know either. Because also, people quite like, and I'm not saying that therefore you're right or wrong or whatever, Yeah. but I mean, I was walking the dog this morning, and there's one particularly lovely big house that I walked past on a, on a particular route that I take. Yes. And there was an older woman, I would say, yes. uh, probably a woman in her 60s, and she has a very big piece of lawn to, right. to, to mow. Yeah. And she was sitting on top of one of those um, yeah, ride, rider mowers. Yes, you know, yeah. Some of which are made by Ferrari. Uh, They're quite expensive. Yeah. And she was, looked very happy and was and had obviously decided, rather than getting a gardener to do it, because yeah. sometimes you can have a gardener which can actually cause you more stress. Of course, yeah. Because the gardener doesn't necessarily do it the way you want That's it. That's right, yeah. Or they don't do the bit over in the corner that yeah. you want them to do. Or, you know, we've had gardeners in the past who don't lift up the table. That's right. To, to mow underneath it. That's and they right. just sort of mow round it. That's right. And some people just enjoy mowing the lawn. Mm, mm. And if you enjoy mowing the lawn, I would say go ahead and do it. Yeah, no, people you know do. I mean? But here's, here's the crux of the experiment, right? Mm. Um, 
Uh, adults were recruited to spend two payments of £30 on two consecutive weekends yes. on a purchase that would save them time. Right. On the other weekend, participants were asked to spend £30 on a material purchase. So, basically, you're given £30 on one weekend, you spend that on getting a cleaner in to yes. clean your house from top to bottom, right. OK? Although, okay. how you get that for 30 quid, I don't know. Right. On the second weekend, you are sent to a, like a superstore to buy a material purchase for £30. Right. Like a new something. Yeah. I it's don't know, it, like a, it a, says, um, on a new kettle or something. Yeah, that's right, yeah. It says, when the uh, people in the experiment were later questioned on mm. what they got most satisfaction from, yes. they said, buying myself £30 worth of time. Really? Not buying myself yeah. a new £30 kettle. OK. So that's incredible. That is incredible. Uh, yeah. is, here's something else incredible for you, a bit of information from you from behind the glass. In 2016, mm. there were 100,000 millionaire households in Holland. In when? 107,000 millionaire households. So for them to find 850... Yeah, it wouldn't be difficult. It's not that hard. But hang on, does that mean people lived in houses worth up to a million, which does not make I them assume, millionaires? I assume it means... Mm. Uh, I just millionaire question, income. Uh, millionaire income. Yeah, uh, yeah. Together. In Holland, 107,000? Yeah. it's an awful lot. Yeah, well, how many do you think there are in Britain? I don't know. Millionaires? I mean, somebody will tell us, yeah. I would be, I'd be surprised if there were 200,000 millionaires in Britain. Wouldn't you? In Britain? Yeah. In Britain, there's about four or five million millionaires. Is there? Yeah, easy. Really? Easy. Does that mean because you've got a house worth a million yes. quid, though? Yes, it does. No, yeah. it doesn't make you a millionaire, in my view. Well, I think it does. It, I think it, you've it, got to have a million... I think to be called a millionaire, you've yeah. got to have a million quid in the bank. In the bank, in, yeah. li- in a liquid form. Yeah, OK. Not in a house. Yeah, OK. Well, most people don't keep million pound in liquid form anyway. Most people would have a variety of no, investments. No, but do you know properties. what I mean? But, yeah, it's a, yeah, but, yeah. But, but it doesn't include yeah. owning a house that's yeah, worth sure. more than a million. Yeah, sure. Sure. Uh, in June 2016, millionaire households in this country, one million. Mm. Also from the US Harvard Business School, yes. another thing you've always argued with me about. OK. Money can buy happiness, say <laughs> scientists at US Harvard Business School. Yeah. They found that um, happiness can be bought. It's exactly the same survey, but they define it as buying happiness. Yes. OK? Yeah, well, I mean, I, I've often said that money may not necessarily buy you happiness, but it buys you an awful lot of places to go mm. and be unhappy, mm. uh, which is one way of looking at it. Peter says, I guess your 10-year-old wants to see Dunkirk as Harry Styles is in it. Uh, absolutely not, Peter. Yeah, he's not a fan. Been, eh? No, uh, yeah. he's not no. a fan of Harry Styles or indeed uh, One Direction. Uh, so that's not the reason. I think it's because he was doing a project on it in school. Yes. And they've talked him into it. I don't know. Yeah. We shall find out. That might be next weekend's uh, trip to the cinema. But coming up next, John Hearn is going to be here, our resident film guru. He'll tell us what he makes of Dunkirk. This is Talk Sport. The two mics simulcast across the UK on Talk Sport and Talk Radio. Well, we are the two mics. John Hearn is here to tell us all about Dunkirk. Just before we come to you, John, a couple of interesting uh, tweets here about New York mm. in September. One uh, which has come in from, uh, I think it's Patrick, uh, who says, I've been working uh, in New York City, living in Jersey City for two years. Love mm. the show. Mm. Plus, you're on the record podcast. Can't wait to see you in New York uh, in September. Lovely. Uh, Carl and Tracy, though, say this. How about this, right? Flights booked from New Zealand to New York for the Two Mics Big Show. What? They're going to fly in from New Zealand. My God. Uh, and they say, please don't get the sack beforehand. No, we won't get the sack beforehand. Which is don't a worry bit harsh, that. isn't it? I mean, yeah. why would they think we're going to get the sack? No idea. You're not going to start attacking anyone again, are you? I hope not. Yeah. Mm-hmm. But anyway, if we do get sacked, we'll be going to New York, probably not coming back. Mm-hmm. So there we are. Anyway, John is here. Uh, you've seen Dunkirk. I haven't. I have, indeed, uh, yes. I'm pretty sure, as I say, my, I, I knew Harry Styles was in it, which yeah. I think is partly putting me off wanting to see it. Should I be worried about that? Um, it worried me because, I, you know, I don't fall into this. I'm not a teenage girl, so therefore no. I'm not obsessed by Harry Styles like my, mm. uh, my nieces. Yeah. Um, so I was kind of a bit, oh, Christopher Nolan, why have you done this? And then, I, yeah, I can understand why, because it sort of taps into to a particular audience. Because he, he wanted to um, cast unknown actors in the main uh, roles of the young soldiers. Right. There, there are well-known actors in the older roles, so there's Kenneth Branagh uh, and, um, and, you know, um, Killian Murphy uh, is playing an older Tom yes, Hardy. Yes, I've seen him in the ad, yeah. Mm. Um, and, mm. uh, you know, so, so he had some, some bigger names in the older, more established characters, but for the very young soldiers, particularly the ones on the beach, he wanted unknown actors. Right. Uh, it so is it's Harris kind of the opposite of Saving Private Ryan, really. Exactly, mm. yeah. And, uh, but I have to say, 
I didn't really notice Harry Styles in the film, which mm. is kind of a good thing. Yeah. Because he didn't overshadow the fact, oh, look, there's Harry Styles. Yeah. And it took me a long time before I kind of worked out which of the characters he was. Yeah. So and was he any good? He is actually well. But the fact that he didn't stand out as being terrible. Yes. And and the the rest of the performances are are so fantastic in the film that mm. you know he actually holds mm. his own within it. Mm. Yeah. Um, so and I it, suppose it's a bit unfair to just assume because he's in a boy band that, that he's he there can't ball, act. Yeah. Not mm. going to be any good. Well, usually people who come from these artistic families are multi-talented, aren't yeah. they? They can yeah. be. They he's can probably be writers, been to, singers. He's, yeah. he's probably been to stage school. Yeah, exactly. As well, right? Yeah. Yeah. More than likely. Yeah. Well, um, yeah. You know, Mark Wahlberg. Yeah. Started out as Marky. Mark and sure. Mark Wahlberg yeah. is, is, is a fantastic uh, actor, anyway, not just John, in action What movies. about this? Uh, I've read it in several reviews that it's one great noisy epic, but you lose the story within all the noise. Um, it is very noisy. <laughs> it is very loud. Mm. Um, and but that's part that, that that's by design to 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 bring the fear into you really mm, mm. when you're watching it and does it um, bring fear into you absolutely particularly yes. when the uh the the me 109s the, the german planes are flying over and, and ready to to attack and mm. bomb the uh the the, the, the soldiers the waiting uh, and waiting on the, the huge bridge to mm. to go out onto the ships mm. the the screaming sound of the aircraft coming down is yeah. is excruciating the but stuka it, it, bombers yeah, had the stuka, special yeah. fins fitted on their wings exactly, didn't they, to, to make yeah. them scream that is that is really loud and mm. louder than I've heard in in any other war film, yeah. and it really really disconcerts you when you when you're watching. It. You think, oh, you know, yeah. it really really puts you off. Mm. Um, but you know, it, and it's it, but it adds to the kind of the emotion that you mm. get through watching the film. Mm. Um, actually, there were some uh, veterans who went to the the premiere in London um, who who survived Dunkirk, and they said that it's actually louder than it really was right the, the sounds yeah. of those aircraft really? is louder yeah. but i think it's 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 part of the just the, the you know the, the creative process mm. of, of actually drawing you into it and mm. that's what's so good about the films it really just makes you part of it rather than just yeah. watching it yeah and is it all around the day's events as it were or is there a lot uh, you know it's a, a, around that particular day it's split it's more than just one day it's split into three sections so you've got mm. the land the sea and the air mm. the land takes place uh, over the course of a week which is yeah. the soldiers waiting on the beach to be mm. rescued the sea takes place over the course of a day mm. so it's all the little ships mm. and uh, and the, the, the destroyers and the cruisers and everything going across to, mm. to pick up the soldiers and then the air is takes place over the course of an hour mm. because that was the amount of fuel that they had they had an hour's worth to, to fly yeah. across the channel and, and, and do yeah. the dogfights and fly back so um, the, the, those three storylines and those three timelines are interconnected mm. so the events you know, that, that you see from from one angle, then it gets repeated later mm. on from another angle. Mm. But to, to to counteract those those three different timelines, so the, there's a moment when it's it's suddenly you know it's daytime in one storyline, then suddenly it's nighttime, and then it goes back to daytime mm. from the original storyline. You think, oh, why is it doing that? And think, oh yeah, yeah, I remember, yeah, because it's the beach scenes are over the course mm. of a week, so mm. therefore you can do that, and the rest is is shorter. Uh, that's a typical kind of Christopher Nolan mm. trick. He likes to play with with time and and you know yeah. and, and and mess around with the, the, the linear structure of the story, yeah. but it doesn't distract from it. it right. It's just it, it's a phenomenal piece of work. Oh, is really? it, is it think, particularly yeah. long? Are, are, no, are there, are there it's many not. long periods where there is no dialogue? Uh, there are long periods where there's, there's not a lot of dialogue. Yeah, um, because it, it's it's very much an action movie. Mm. I mean, Tom Hardy has something like ten lines throughout the whole film, and he's one of the main characters. Yeah, um, but it's not a particularly long film. It's actually Christopher Nolan's second shortest film. Mm. And um, so it's, and, and I actually kind of wanted more. I would, I, I would yeah. quite happily watch another half an hour of it. How was Sir Kenneth Branner in it? Because I always get the impression that he always thinks he's doing us a favour just by starring in a film. <laughs> <laughs> if you know what I mean? Yeah, you know, I know exactly what you mean by yeah. that. He, he does have that very kind of slightly aloof look. Yes, um, and and he does play that that character mm. within this film again. You know, mm. he, he does he does portray it in Emma that Thompson's way. a bit like that as well, isn't she? Well, she's very talented, though. She writes scripts and all no, that no, kind of stuff you, as well. No, no, but it's the same kind of yeah, thing. Yeah, probably, yeah. But, but more so with Sir Kenneth, because, of course, he, from the age of about 18, he went mm. around telling everybody he was going to be the next Lord Olivier. Yeah. Um, didn't he, really? And he, and he pretty much was. Pretty yeah. much was, and pretty much probably soon will be. What about uh, Mark Rylance? He's in it, isn't he? Yeah, he plays the captain of one of the small, ships, yeah. one of the little ships that goes across the, the channel. Um, he's, yeah, he's brilliant. He's, he's mm. very, very typical Mark Rylance. He's very under stated in his performance yeah. he, he doesn't get uh, particularly 
over emotional. Yeah. Um, but he's 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 very engaging because he's so calm in in the midst of all this chaos that's going around right. him. Okay. Uh, particularly when they rescue Killian Murphy's character out mm. of uh, of the the English Channel, and, yeah. and he's going crazy because of what he's experienced. Yeah. And Mark Rylance's character is just very very calm. No, we are going to go across to Dunkirk. Mm. We're going to rescue these people, mm. and then we're going to come back again. Yeah. And that is it. That's what we're doing. No, you see, I don't think Killian Murphy should be allowed to star in anything except the Peaky Blinders because that's uh, <laughs> due out. A lot of things before. Well, that. yeah, well, okay. Before he's been around for nearly twenty years. Well, I know, fifteen years. I know, but once he got into Peaky Blinders and became the star of what I think is one of the best, you know, TV programs ever made, I don't think he should then go and sort of, you know, freelance on some other film, <laughs> which uh, which will confuse me next time. That's why I'm not going to go and watch it because I don't want to go and watch the next season of Peaky Blinders and think, hang on, well, where's the Stuka bomber? Yeah, yeah that's uh, that's Tommy Shelby. Shelby Shelby. Yeah, you're not capable of suspending your disbelief for different characters and different films. Not really, because funny enough, I don't know if you know the plot of Peaky Blinders, but in Peaky Blinders, he was badly mentally scarred by Mm. his his, uh, role as a soldier in the First World War when he was a tunneler, and they used to tunnel in and blow up the Germans and all this kind of stuff. The thing is, though, when Christopher Nolan yeah. phones you up and says, hey, Killian, remember we've done four films together. Mm. I'm doing a film about Dunkirk. Do you want to be in it? Yeah. I don't think his first thought is going to be, I did Peaky Blinders. Mm-hmm. Don't think I can. No, yeah. exactly. And that's what most really? people, most of these actors, well, look at Daniel Craig. He doesn't want to do any more James Bond, but he said he doesn't want to do it. And now he's been roped back into it because they've offered him a bucket load of money to do it. I didn't realise, by the way, that uh, Daniel Craig had done three films since the last James Bond. So he presumably was planning for life without James yeah. Bond, was he? Yeah, well, he, he, he's always done other films at the same time as yeah. James Bond. Uh, yeah. A uh, lot more than See, the, that, the other that Bonds would, That done. would screw my mind up as well if I went and saw one of those. Thought, What's James Bond doing in this film? You know what I mean? That's bizarre. It's hard to put it all together. Well, can you mean you've never watched, say, Sean Connery in something other than yeah, James and I, Bond? Yeah, I always thought it looked pathetic. Do you remember Rich, uh, Roger Moore once did a film called Gold, didn't he, while he was uh, still James Bond? He did. It was about South African mining. Yeah, right. Yeah, and and it was dreadful because you know it was a, it was a dreadful film, and and I think that uh, dehances uh, the reputation of James Bond. Yeah, Peter says this. Uh, mm. Nolan said he didn't know Styles was in One Direction when he was casting him. Was mm. Nolan living in some kind of a coma for the last ten years? Is that <laughs> possible? Quite, it is quite possible actually, mm. because Christopher Nolan is very obsessed. Yeah. Mm. Um, with with making films, I think that was more. A little bit of, I don't know this for sure, but I would guess it's a little bit of pressure from Warner Brothers because mm. they've invested a lot of money into this film mm. and Christopher Nolan insisted on not having American stars in it. There are no American actors in the film. Right. Um, because he said it's about a British event and it's, yes. you know, it's a, a, a pivotal event in, in the whole war. And if, mm. if this evacuation had failed... Yeah the course of the war could have been completely different. Oh, it would have been, yeah. And and he said he didn't want to make a traditional war movie where it was uh, a, a, some glorious mm. victory. Mm. And uh, and he didn't want any American characters. And the fact there are no German characters in it either. Yes. And and so I think he was under a little bit of pressure from, look, you've got to have somebody in it that we can that American mm. audiences can identify with. Yeah. Which is why he went for the, for the more well-known Oscar-winning older sure. actors. And to, well, okay, this could be a compromise. I mean, that's mm. the sort of... This thing does kind of happen, you know, yeah. the, the studios can parachute in actors into particular roles because and, and say, well, look, we'll give you the money if you cast this person in sure, this role. Sure. So it may have come from, from Warner Brothers rather than him. And historically, the film is accused of ignoring the contribution of the French army because I didn't realise 100,000 French mm. soldiers spent most of the war in Britain after being rescued from Dunkirk, but there's very little of that in the film, is there? Uh, there, there are French... It is mentioned, but mm. the the way that the film is portrayed is that the British soldiers were given priority, which is not yes. strictly true. Well, uh, historically, uh, historically, apparently, the British soldiers were always taken on the ships before the French soldiers yeah. to get them back to England. Yeah. But uh, but yeah, they they do at the end of the film say that mm. yeah, we, you know, we, we are going to rescue the French as well. We're not yeah. just abandoning them. Yeah. So it's uh, you know, it, it's it's not. I mean, yeah. obviously, there's always going to be a few little compromises whenever yeah. you're doing a historical film. But you know, it, it's it's so. Sure. Well made, and it's so historically accurate on everything else yeah, that sure. I think you can forgive the few little creative uh, moments. Okay, so has. what marks out of ten would you give this film? I'll give it ten out of ten. Really? Wow. Without Is question. That good? Yeah, absolutely. Wow. So it's yeah. one of the best films you've ever seen, then. I I honestly would say it is one of the best films I've ever seen. Yet. Wow, that's amazing. You better go and see it. I better go and see it. Yeah. You get your uh, skates on, John. Good thank idea. you very much indeed. Yeah, thanks, John. Help! I need somebody. Help! Not just anybody. Help! You know I need someone Help! When, when I was younger, so much younger than today I never, need, I never needed anybody's help in any way Now, now 
we heard a little bit earlier on that uh, this is the anniversary of Hard Day's Night, I think, didn't we? So uh, yes. a little bit of Beatles there. That's Help, right. of course, a slightly yeah. different album, but yeah. uh, uh, similar age, I suppose you might say. Uh, the music means, of course, that it is time to ask Porky. We've yes. got lots and lots of great questions, okay. uh, and we're going to go straight to them we because, of are. course, uh, part of the problem we have is getting through as many of the questions uh, that we have as quickly as we can. Yes. Uh, now, we're going to kick it off uh, with a football question from Phil, yeah. uh, who sent us in at the two mics. If you had to predict a top four in exact order at the end of Premier League 17 18, yeah. who would you go for? So uh, that's at the end yeah. of the season coming up. Yeah, that's right. OK, I would go for Chelsea retaining their title, followed by Manchester United, Manchester City, and Spurs. Really? Yeah. OK. Steve the Cabbie says, can you ask Porky this? I'm currently on my way to Gatwick to drop off. Should I stay for a flight landing at 9.45am or go home? Uh, depends where you live, I suppose. Does he say where he lives? He doesn't say where he lives. But right. if he's serving Gatwick, I presume he's, he's yeah, within... Somewhere, so I wouldn't uh, hang around at Gatwick for six hours. I can't see the point. I mean, you know, apart from it being incredibly boring, isn't there other work you can do? If you're a cabbie in the middle of the night, there's plenty of work, you know, people who want to get to work in London, people who want to get to airports. No, 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 do not stay at Gatwick. Get out there, man, and uh, find yourself some more fares and earn yourself some money. Don't be sitting around for six hours. No, exactly right. Uh, coming up uh, next, hang on, let me just find you this one mm. here. Um, I'm looking at doing a city break in Europe in September, says Sam. Uh, did Barcelona in May. Where would Porky recommend for me to visit next? Uh, if I were you and I was going away for a weekend in Europe, I would go to somewhere East European because I think it's fantastic. You know, I'd go somewhere maybe in Poland. Uh, maybe uh, Moscow would be fantastic for a weekend. Uh, maybe um, somewhere like Prague, you know, for the Prague Spring Prague. type um, celebrations. If you've already done, which one does he say done? Uh, Barcelona. Barcelona. Well, that's hot Mediterranean. Go somewhere with completely contrastingly different. Or even think about, you know, somewhere landlocked like Amsterdam. Mm. Amsterdam. Go and look for some of those millionaires. Yes. Um, what will the word presidential mean post to Donald Trump, says John? That's quite a quirky one, isn't it? Uh, I don't think it'll make anything different to it is now. Every president has had its own, you know, footprint, so to speak. Every president has, uh, has made it his own mark on the American way of life. But the term president and the office of the president of the United States of America is held in such reverence within the United States as well as around the world that actually a single individual occupying the office for four years will not change its austerity. Stuart says this. Sorry, I, sorry, sorry it's, it's enormity. Enormity. Yeah. Uh, I like to play golf, says Stuart, and often have a laugh with my fellow golfers. Should I grow a beard? Well, that's a ridiculous question. I'm not going to spend much time on it. Grow a beard if you want to grow a beard, but I'm sorry, that's a pointless question and you're wasting our time. OK. Uh, Kayong says this. Porky, who do you admire the most? MG, cyclists, rucksackers or Jay Rayner? That's easy, surely. Uh, well, I don't admire Jay Rayner no. at all because the guy's very thin-skinned. I don't like uh, rucksackers because they're a social, a damn social nuisance. Cyclists seem to think that they should rule the world to the exclusion of anybody else, so that only leaves MG. Thank you very much indeed. Yeah. I, I don't mind coming in at the end there. Yeah. Uh, Red Magic says, Portmeister, do you believe in ghosts and have you ever encountered one? No, I don't believe in ghosts and I've never encountered one, uh, but I do believe there's an afterlife. It's just that I don't think you can get back. I think it's the afterlife is a valve and you go through it and the valve shuts behind you and there's no way back. If there was a way back, people would have come back. I think life moves on. I think, you know, time on Earth is a speck of, you're a speck of um, sand in the Sahara. But when you go on, I don't know what happens next. Something's got to happen next because where did we come from? Where are we going to? But no, I don't believe in ghosts. Now, this is a slightly historical and scientific question at the same time from yeah. Glenn on yeah. Facebook. Dear Porky, the Great Pyramid of Giza weighs approximately 6 million tonnes. Mm. Its footprint is 13 acres. It's more than 750 foot across, along each side, yeah. 481 feet tall, and more than 2.5 million individual blocks of stone were used yeah. in its construction, each weighing an average of 2.5 tonnes. Mm. Did a lost civilization build the pyramids, Porky, or do you think the Egyptians were just smarter than the average bear? I think the Egyptians were smarter than the average bears and and what you have to ask yourself is how did they get the rocks up continually well the answer to that is that the egyptians were not only good mechanically but they're a ruthless um society and they had millions of slaves and millions of slaves died on the job of building the pyramids so when you've got an endless supply of human beings you can uh, make them extremely expendable in doing over exertion you know human tasks 
were, were and the Egyptians were good at doing pulleys and all that kind of stuff. So they basically got them made through mass slavery. Yes. yes. Uh, here's one from Andrew. I'm trying to quit smoking, Porky. I smoke at work, but the lads uh, talk garbage all day. Any tips to ignore them? Uh, you can ignore anybody you want if you want to. You've got to be solid and uh, and uh, strong-minded about this. You know, if I find some bore in the workplace, I just give them the brush off because I don't want my mind deflected from the main job at hand, which is to pursue excellence in my own tasks, in my own job. Don't tolerate bores at all. And in fact, be strong and just say, look, I'm sorry, I do not want to speak to you. Please go away. Cameron says this, Porky, who would you prefer to be in the trenches with? I think I know the answer to this one. Neville Southall or Steve McLaren? Uh, well, it'd be Neville Southall, obviously, because he's a former hero of mine. He's the greatest goalkeeper in the world. Man's a legend. Uh, like to be with legendary people. Steve McLaren on your hand. He's not a bad man. He's a good man. He works in Holland. He's the England manager. But to me, he's not a legend. So I say big Nev. Big Nev. Talking of Everton, uh, James says, as an Everton fan, you're entitled to be optimistic about the coming season with all the new transfers and the ambition being shown by the club. But are you not worried that the combination of your players having to gel together as a unit and your difficult schedule at the beginning of the season uh, that your top four hopes could be shattered before the season's really started? No, not at all. I mean, I heard um, some daft uh, uh, guy doing the papers on the show before ours who was going on about, you know, I think it was from the Daily Mirror, who was going on about, uh, you know, Everton have got to integrate eight new players, you know, and, and then said that they've got a great new goalkeeper, a great new defender, some great new midfield players. No, uh, Chelsea and Manchester City have been integrating players season after season for years. I have no fears about it whatsoever. And if you're going to beat teams, why shouldn't you uh, get them all in the first six games? You've, mm. got, to, you've got to start bright and, and confident, and, and that could make your season. Indeed. Tony says this, Porky, I'm getting married next weekend and wanted to pick your brains on how to ensure a long and successful marriage. Have you got any tips, please? Well, I'm told that a long and successful marriage can normally happen by seeing each other's point of view, by spending time working on the marriage and by never going to bed uh, with a row uh, simmering in the household. Mm. However, however, as I've never been married, I'm not the best to offer marital advice. All I'd say is, if you think it's worth it and you must do for getting married, then you have to work at it. One great editor of mine told me once, getting to the top in journalism was tough, but keeping his marriage together during that time was tougher, but he spent more time <laughs> on his marriage than he did on his job. Did he? Yes. Well, he couldn't have been a very good journalist, then, because no, I don't know exactly. anybody who did that. No. Uh, Little Lionel sends this one in from Australia. What is your opinion, please, Mr Parry of Australia, and more specifically Melbourne, uh, and this is from a 14-year-old living in Melbourne. Uh, I, I haven't been to Melbourne, so I've been to Australia, oh, okay. and I love Australia. Mm. I love Sydney, and I love Perth, the two places I've been to. Uh, I'm sure Melbourne is just as equally a good city. I Melbourne's think... known for the four seasons in one day yes, thing. Yes, it is. It? Yeah, it is very much so, and also a sporting centre. Yeah. You know. And uh, all I have to say is, is that if people in Melbourne have the same attitudes as people in Sydney and Perth, I'm sure they do, mm. uh, it'll be an equally great city. I just think there's a political correctness that's crept into Australian way of life, <coughs> which we know about through our great friend Sandra, yes. which, uh, which I never thought would arrive in Australia, and I hope they extinguish it as soon as they can. We'll have to get into that soon with her. She's still travelling at the moment. Another football question. I was just wondering, says Ian, if Wembley is Spurs' home ground this season, what happens if Spurs make the League Cup final, mm. FA Cup semi-finals, or even in the FA Cup final, surely yeah. they will have an unfair advantage. Well, yeah, they would because they played at the ground where those competitions are taking place uh, every other weekend. But that's part of the deal, I'm afraid. Uh, you could say that, um, you know, in the old days when clubs played um, semi finals at uh, neutral grounds and that kind of stuff, that was meant to eradicate the familiarity with the ground. But frankly, when a footballer goes on a pitch, it doesn't matter where it is, he's got to play a game. OK, now Max says this. Now you mentioned uh, Prague earlier. Uh, my old man, he says, he's currently in Prague for his birthday. Uh, uh, 38 today or 39. I'm a terrible son. He'll most certainly be listening. So could you offer suggestions on things to see whilst he's over there? Well, what, what do you go to see when you go on a weekend with your mates to Prague? You don't go to see the cathedral or the great buildings. You might want to go down the old town and have a quick look around. But that would also involve a tour of the old town bar. There's so, probably an old. Uh, there's probably a bit of a government activity you can go and look at, or maybe the yeah. old uh, Politburo or something. Right? Yeah, maybe if you wanted to. Well, why bother? You know, when you're in Prague, beautiful city, great big Wenceslas Square in the middle. Just get on with it. Okay. How about this one from uh, where are we? Uh, last one here from. Uh, 
Uh, no, it's no Stephen. I don't want to read that one out. Um, there was another one here. Uh, tomorrow is my first day at McDonald's. Uh, I'm only 16. It's my first ever job uh, during the day. Yeah. Have you got any tips? Yeah, just apply yourself to your job. Turn up on time. Turn up smartly dressed. Speak properly to your customers. Address them with um, with respect. And you will be noticed by your managers as a boy who has the right attitude to succeed in what is, after all, one of the world's most successful businesses. Yes, indeed. Uh, Adam says this. I'm not quite sure what he's referring to. Porky, after the recent show of Strength by Your Flock, mm. are you willing to fly us all over to New York for the live show? Uh, no, I'm afraid I'm not, because I haven't got enough money to do so. However, if you want to join us over there, a glass of wine will be coming your way pr- uh, at the end of the show. Yes, um, but of course, I mean, uh, it's not an unlimited size of a venue. No. There's 300 uh, seats, I think, something like that. Yeah. Uh, there should be plenty of VIP ones available now. Well, well by over the way, half the seats have gone already. Oh, so, I think they have, yeah. So people are needing to uh, get real. Now, this has been asked to you before, I think, in another form, but no harm yeah. asking again. Yeah. Craig says, I'd like to know the three perfect guests at Porky's perfect dinner party, alive or dead. Uh, John Lennon, uh, Lord Nelson and uh, Queen Elizabeth I. Queen Elizabeth I. Yeah. Uh, Carl says this, why do people feel the need to queue to get on a plane? You have a seat. What's worse uh, is the plane hasn't even arrived yet. I think this is one of those things that people see, mm. you know, when you get to an airport in the yeah. summer yeah. and they announce the flight. Everybody stands up. That's right, yeah. And nobody's moving. That's right. Well, they all stand up and just stand there. Well, I don't, actually. If I, I know don't I've got an allocated seat, I, I stay either. in the bar until the last minute, until I see the last possible person trickling through the uh, departure lounge exit, you know what I mean? Mm. And then go and follow them. And uh, one argument used to be, oh, well, you know, you need space above your seat to put your, you know, your hand luggage and all that. No, you don't. I've never, ever yet, neither of you, in the thousands of flights we've taken, uh, taken off in a plane where all the hand luggage hasn't been stowed no. over, overhead. No, it's not. We always find somewhere. Exactly. Now, yeah. final question, because we're out of time, uh, from Brett. Yeah. Porky, do you think Chris Froome deserves more adulation than he currently receives? It's a very odd relationship Chris Froome has with both the racing... Uh, the, the cycling fraternity and mm. this country. Yeah. Some people don't believe he's British, so they don't actually, you know, give him the full uh, uh, rewards or the or the full attention he should get. Yes. Within the cycling world, he's treated with great suspicion for some unknown reason. But the cycling world is a very poisonous. It's a one, very isn't it? very poisonous world. You know, uh, apparently uh, he doesn't get on with uh, our knight. You know, sir, what's his name? Who won one? Bradley Wiggins. Bradley Wiggins, who won one to Chris Froome's. Is it four now? Chris Froome's one. Yeah, I think four this is his five. Fourth, yeah. yeah. Apparently they don't get on. Apparently the rest of the, you know, uh, the British contingent, some in the Sky team, don't get on with each other. The authorities don't get on with him, and he doesn't have a great relationship with the, with the sporting public. When you look at the, res- you know, the, re- the response to Jordan Spieth's uh, victory on Sunday in the Open, the British Open, an American, yeah, and the response that Chris Froome got for mm. winning his fourth out of five. Uh, um, Tour de France. Tour yeah. de France is there was no comparison. Yeah, incredible. That was Ask Porky. There'll be another yeah. one same time next week. Yeah. Uh, this is TalkSport. The two mics simulcast across the UK on TalkSport and Talk Radio. The video. Talk sport, we are the two mics. Patrick says this. Porky's housekeeper sounds like Alan Partridge's assistant, Lynn. Have you seen that show? What's that? Pa- Alan Partridge. Have you seen his... Assi- he's got this assistant called Lynn. No, Who okay, kind of yeah. does everything for yeah, him. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But she doesn't actually clean up for him as well. But she, oh, she has to sort of get him out of all sorts of scrapes. Oh, I see. But no, I haven't uh, seen she's that. She's kind of his slave. The only Alan Partridge thing I've seen was that film... Oh, what, the, the one that came out a couple of... Uh, he made a film a couple of years ago yes. in which... Uh, I haven't seen that. Uh, ...hostages took over the radio station, yes. that kind of stuff, which yeah. I thought was quite good. Yeah. That was quite funny. Partridge's very funny, actually. Yeah, I think he's quite a funny it's, guy. It's one, the, it's one of the few things I like Steve Coogan doing. Yeah. Uh, Amsterdam landlocked, question mark, says David Lynch. Yes. Um, well, I think it is... Well, it's well, not exactly landlocked. No, it's got I mean, a port, obviously, I, mean, I know that, but it's not in the Mediterranean. That's the point I was making, OK? Right. Well, it doesn't make it's it northern, landlocked, does it? It's northern, northern European, all mm. right? Mm, yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, uh, a lot of stragglers these days have their hand luggage put into the hole. That is true. 
Sometimes you well, get to the edge of the plane and they take it off you. Yeah. And then they used to do it with, with prams and things like that. Yeah, that's right. But sometimes now you're being told if you want to take it on board, you've got to pay for it. It's mm. ridiculous. It's gone completely in reverse. Yeah. In the old days, you know, you were doing them a favour taking it on board so you didn't have to go in the hole. No, exactly Now they're right. going to charge you for it. Mm. Yeah. Now, Steve the cabbie, who was asking you about his dilemma about whether you should hang around at Gatwick Airport. Yes. He says he lives in Bexley. Uh, right. And he only does airports. He says he was thinking, uh, asking you the question for saving fuel and helping the environment. No, situation. no, no, no. Get out there, man. If you're sitting around, you know, on your Aris for six hours, you ain't going to generate any business. That's guaranteed. Mm. If you get out and get back there and start looking for it, you may get business. So, you know, being sedentary, mate, never did anybody any good at all. No. In fact, it makes you ill. Yes. But if you, I mean, if you have to sit at a, 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 an airport because you're waiting for a 9.45 fare yeah. from, say, 4.30. Yeah. That's quite a long time, isn't it? That's five hours. Yeah, well, that's what I mean. Don't hang around. Mm. You know, do what the uh, drivers of stretch limos in New York City will do when they take their very wealthy qui- clients to Broadway. Mm. They then push off for the two and a half hours the show's on and go and find somebody who's give them $30, up streets, yeah, yeah, to uh, drive them up and down the avenues. I suppose you. there's always a risk of, of, uh, of letting the wrong people into the car, isn't there? Well, it happened, didn't it, with the bishop when mm. uh, somebody threw up in the back of the car, remember? <laughs> That's right. Yeah, yeah and the bishop's Fair driver enough, went off and did a bit of, of freelance. Thinking of that exact story, yeah, I exactly. can remember what the uh, the details yeah, were. Yeah, well, it was the bishop of New York. Yeah, and he uh, had to clean the car out before he managed to pick him up again. That, that's right. Mm. But whether or not, and then he had to say he'd been ill himself because yeah. of course he couldn't remove the smell altogether. No, he said, "Oh, I felt ill, sir. You know, and I went in the back to say, oh, I was violently There's nothing Ill. worse than that. No, exactly. I, t- I told you the story of when, um, you know, when we had a problem with Citroen. Yes. And when I had a car that just kept going wrong. Yes. Ever since we put it into the Citroen place. Yes. And I managed. To convince him to give us a C4 car, mm, yeah. which was like the sports car I'd drive around it. Yeah. And one of my kids, unfortunately, was ill. Yes. Uh, down inside the well of the window. Oh God. You know, and we had to give oh. the car back, right? Oh, oh dear. <laughs> and uh, there's just no way. I mean, no. you might as well just burn, set fire to the car. Yeah, exactly. And just trash it. It's, you know, it's done forever. I'm and it was a lot, apparently, it was being driven by the very pompous manager of this uh, Citroen showroom. I see, yeah. But he'd been shamed into lending us his car for yeah. a while. When he got it back, oh, God. Um, I don't think he was too happy. I but he couldn't do anything. I shouldn't think he was. You know. I shouldn't think he was. What can you do? It's uh, a very unhappy situation. Yeah. Now then, I'll tell you what I want to talk to you about, right? Uh, what I want to talk to you about is... Um, did you know that the highway code is now completely out of date because of the efficiency of new cars? Well, is, is this part of the um, the information that says that the stopping distances are completely wrong? Because Absolutely. I've, I've read that story. But did they not say that the stopping distances are too short rather than too far? No. They're 27 yards more than the code recommends. Right. So that's that, what I'm saying. Yeah, so, that's I mean, right. Yeah. Wouldn't you think that if the cars were better, yeah. they would stop quicker? Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Most of us have been sold woefully short by the highway code, which mm. dramatically underestimates the braking distances of cars. Right. Dramatically underestimates. You're yeah. absolutely right. It found that the distance taken to bring a car travelling at 70 miles an hour to a halt is 27 yards more yeah. than the code recommends. But isn't this because they say the code hasn't taken into account the amount of time your brain has to kind of, yeah. con- you know, to sort of compartmentalise all the information? Yeah, but it is six car lengths more than the 104 yards recommended by the code. Right. I mean, that means you could smash into two or three cars, <laughs> doesn't it? Well, do you remember we did a quiz on the highway code? Yes. And, I mean, one of the things that I asked you, I think, on one occasion was, was the stopping distance in, That's the, right. in the wet That's right. uh, when you're travelling at 70 miles miles an hour. Yeah. And I mean, I don't think most people would be able to answer that question, to be honest. No. Because, I mean, when was the last time you actually read That's the right. highway code? That's right. But you know I mean? for instance, here, it found that the average total stopping distance at 20 miles an hour mm. is 21 yards. Right. But the code says it's 13 yards. At 30 miles an hour, the the organisation who uh, commissioned this poll mm. are called Break. Uh, which is a an organisation... These are the people that are keen to bring the speed down. It's a they? road safety charity yes. to bring speed down. Yeah. You're quite right. Mm. At 30 miles an hour, Brake recommends 34 yards compared to the code's 25 yards. OK. At 40 miles an hour, stopping distance should be nearly 56 yards, yeah. but the code says 39 yards. Really? And then it gets to, uh, you know, higher and higher and more and more distances. Right. But, uh, you know, a guy for this organisation says, understanding true average thinking time reminds all drivers how far their car will travel right. before they begin to brake. Not when they yeah. brake, but before well, they begin to brake. I could give you an interesting uh, example yeah. of that happening yesterday, right? 
I had a very frustrating drive. I had to take uh, the kids from next door and my kids to yeah. the skate park, right? And we got stuck in a terrible traffic jam because some idiot from the local council decided yeah. to start cleaning one of the drains. You know those kind of yes. road sweeper type yes. things? Yes, And And just completely held up all the traffic. So it made us late. Yeah. Uh, I then had to sort of do a few uh, back roads and rap runs to get them to the place they needed to go yeah. because we were running late. Now, I pulled out, and I could see there was a, there was a road uh, that was going up the hill. I pulled out. Yeah. Um, to see whether I could get around this parked car. Yes. And as I pulled out, I could see to my right that it was clear, yeah. but I couldn't quite see to my left. Right. And I pulled out, and, it, and the guy, and then there was a car coming, right? Yes. But here's what he did. He, instead of actually stopping, mm. he just made the most ridiculous face you've ever seen yeah. and kind of breathed in like... <laughs> Like that, like yeah. as if by breathing in somehow I wouldn't hit him. Yeah. You know, and I wasn't going to hit him because I was preparing to stop anyway. Yes. But he looked at me like it was the worst thing he'd ever seen in his life. Yeah, preparing uh, himself to be shunted. Well, yeah, but yeah. instead of... Which, which, yeah. but, but he was only doing about 20, 25 miles an hour. Good if God. he'd actually st- stuffed his foot on the brake, yeah. he wouldn't have needed to make the face. He wouldn't have needed to breathe in. No, no, no. And he wouldn't have needed... And, and then they, then I pulled in around behind them, mm. and his missus, or whoever it was in the car with him, yeah turned around and was scary, glaring at me, you yeah, know, yeah, like yeah. I'd done something wrong. Like a glare. And I hadn't done anything wrong no. because I couldn't see beyond the parked car. Exactly. So I had to pull out in order to see beyond it. Exactly. And once I'd done that, I stopped and he didn't stop. Mm. So, I mean, if I wasn't aware of what was going on, yeah. we would have had a collision. Absolutely. And it probably would have been classed as my fault probably. because I was pulling into the road. Probably, almost certainly. But that's the problem, isn't it? That's the thinking time. Yeah. So he's thinking, he's seeing the car yeah. that's about to hit him but instead of braking, yeah. he just keeps going. That's right. Yeah. Oh, oh, yeah. Oh, Somebody you know. else will solve this problem. Yeah. yeah. And I think that's the problem. Yeah. Listen, I want to tell you about a pub in uh, Bristol called um, the Hatchet Inn. Oh, yeah. Uh, it's unique in this country mm-hmm. because the ancient door that you go through to get in there yeah. is lined with human skin. What? Yeah. Hey? Yeah. Are you sure? Yeah. That doesn't sound good. Well, it's not human skin of modern people. It's human skin of poor, you know, seamen who were convicted yeah, of crimes I, I years ago. I don't care. I still don't want to be in a pub that's lined with human skin. The Hatchet Inn was first licensed in 1606 uh, and was once the regular of uh, the most famous ever... Uh, pirate Blackbeard. Blackbeard, yes. So Blackbeard used to go in there and get, mm. you know, tanked up before. Well, Bristol he... was a big pirate centre. Oh, yeah, wasn't of course it was. Yeah, mm. yeah. Well, it was the biggest port in the world at one yeah. time, Bristol, in the yeah. 1600s, right? Yeah. So uh, it's Bristol's oldest pub. Blackbeard used to use it. Now, the origins of the 300 year old tar door, yeah. uh, according to local historians, uh, they used the skin of executed criminals in gruesome Ooh. ways in Bristol Ooh. because it was, like, full of pirates and all that. Yeah. They had to make sure that when people were punished, they mm. were punished very badly yeah. to stop other ne'er-doers committing crimes. Yes. So the most notorious case in 1821 mm. involved John Horwood. He was a young gang member. He right. was probably thought to be only about 17. Mm who became infatuated with a woman called Elisa Balsam. OK. As in balsam salt. As in balsam wood. Balsam wood. Yeah. No, no, that's balsa wood. A balsa wood. Yeah, balsam, as in balsam oh, okay. salts. Yeah. Right. She rejected his advances, mm. but when he saw another man and he was uh, in drink, yes. he picked up a cobblestone and threw it at what he thought was the man's head. Right. But he hit her on the head. Oh, dear. Now, she died in hospital shortly mm. afterwards. Right. Horwood was seized by the militia, uh, taken straight to court, uh, summarily charged with murder, mm. charged, um, found guilty and executed. Well, what happened to his skin? His skeleton was boiled. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. Where do you find this stuff? His, his skeleton was boiled yeah. and given to Bristol University. Yeah. His skin was tanned and used to bind together his trial notes in a book, Ooh. right, to say to people, this tanned. is what happens, right. yeah. How do they do that, then? Is that like a sort of chemical process? I don't know. I don't know. Sounds like it. The hatchet uh, has just been bought right. by a new owner who's thinking now what to do with the door that is covered in his human skin. I think he wants to take it off and give it to a museum. Ooh. That's what I would do. I don't think he would entice people into a pub Ooh. which has got human skin on the wall. Yeah. That's horrendous. Yeah. We might have to disclose... We might have to try and get... Older the guy. Yeah. Talk about it some more. Indeed. Uh, because we're out of time. Mm. This is Talk Sport. Look at the light! Don't forget to come back tomorrow for another sparkling, as busy as a bottle of champagne podcast from the two mics.
It has happened over the centuries. Who's thrown a tennis ball through a wall? Nobody had a tennis ball 300 so years ago. So it's never happened then? It, it will happen. Oh, it will happen. Scientific... So you think someone will be able to pass an object through another solid object, yes, I but do. you don't think we should have electric cars? No, because electric cars won't work. I see. It'll drain Just the checking. world of energy. It won't okay. work. Obviously. You're draining me of energy. Plasmus goes into a shop and asks for a bottle of beer. Yeah. And the guy behind the counter says, will that be cash or charge? And he says... What do you think? It's your joke, not put mine. It, put it on my bill. Put it on my bill. <laughs> this is Talk Sport. Pathetic. If you love the Two Mics podcast, you'll love the live show. Weekday overnights from 1am on DAB Digital Radio and 1089 and 1053 AM and via the Talk Sport app. Talk Sport, your Premier League station with exclusive commentaries every weekend. What an absolute corker. Talk Sport. Listen, Capaldi. You know, you may uh, have given up Doctor Who, but you're not nicking my Cadbury's flake on the back of it. 